are you Chris Jeff? Yeah, I'm I'm the one that sent you the message. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm looking at my request first. I'm just confirming it. Oh, uh, yeah, I sent you the message with the uh with the Bundy Ranch link to it. All right. <clears throat> oh, is that to the Bundy Ranch or is that the actual or is that the actual link to the post? That's the link to the post. Okay. So after African American bodyguard would take bullet for Bundy. And this, this is actually a CNN one, and they, they tried to get him to, you know, follow the crowd and whatever. And obviously, since Bundy wasn't being a racist, they were just nitpicking. Yeah. So they didn't. So, so likelihood they didn't post that video on their main page because obviously that's not what they wanted. There's also another good article about. Uh, let me see if I get his name right. He's a lieutenant governor for Virginia. Uh huh. What's his name? Republican Lieutenant Governor Candidate E.W. Jackson. He actually spoke of a gathering of uh, conservative leaders in Washington about nine months ago, it looks like. And uh, yeah. E.W. Jackson is a descendant from a slave, so he said the same thing that Bundy said. If you want that link as well, that's on my that's on my wall if you want to check it out. Just copy it and post it wherever. Is it is it on your actual Facebook page or or a yeah. page? Okay. No, it's on mine. I posted it to mine. I can All send right. you the link. I'll look for it. I'm trying to catch up stuff right now. I it's the uh, second post. I'm trying to share it to a bunch of pages real quick. The other thing still. <laughs> yep. I got a lot of pages to post to, so. I'm wondering if that piece of. Nope. Didn't even check it out. Swear to God. And Paul's an attractive statement. I don't know if I can vote for him. I sent him video and all sorts of stuff to his page. For who? Rand Paul. <coughs> Ron Paul? Rand, his son. Oh, okay. I, I know he probably gets a lot, but still. This is important. This is, <clears throat> this is important. Yeah. It Paul's is. Like, yeah. It's very important, but a lot of people don't take shit seriously, you know? How many people are on the call? Two, three, four? Three, I think. Yeah, because I was going to try and call Rand Paul and record, and then I'll post it to his wall since he doesn't pick up. I have to try calling him before. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. All right. Patriots on. Hey, it's four to one. What's going yeah, on, Real Patriots? Uh, not huh? much. Anything yeah. going on today? No, everything's nice and calm, and uh, they're having a, a party today, so that's a ranch, a barbecue again. I think there's live performances. I haven't got the lineup yet, but I should have it shortly. Uh, I don't know. Have you have you saw the have you have you saw what I posted about the about uh, the email Carol Bundy sent? Uh, no. <laughs> All right, uh, Carol Bundy posted, We are trading one form of slavery for another. For immediate press release, Bundy Range War, 425-14. She, she put this and sent it out. We are trading one form of slavery for another. What I am saying is that all we, uh, all we Americans are trading one form of slavery for another. All of us are, in some measure, slaves of the federal government through their oppressive tactic of telling the ranchers how many cows they can have on their land and making that number too low to support a ranch. The BLM has driven every rancher in Clark County off the land except me. 
The IRS keeps the people of America in fear and makes us all work about a third of a half of the year before we have earned enough to pay their taxes. This is nothing but slavery from January through May. The NSA spies on us and collects our private phone calls and emails and the government dole, which many people in America are on and have been for much of their lives is dehumanizing and degrading. It takes away incentive to work and self-respect. Eventually, a person on the dole, I don't know what dole is supposed to mean in that, but becomes a, a ward of the government because his only source of income is a dole from the government. I don't know what he's using that dole for. Uh, Once the government, uh, 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 huh? uh, it's a handout. Okay. Once the government has you in the, that position, you are its slave. I'm trying to keep Martin, Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream alive. He was praying for the day when he and his people would be free, and he could say, I'm free, free at last. Thank God I'm free at last. But all of us here in America, no matter our race, are having our freedom eroded and destroyed by the federal government because of its heavy-handed tactics. The BLM, the IRS, the NSA, all of the federal agencies are destroying our freedom. I am standing up against their bad and unconstitutional laws, just like Rosa Parks did when she refused to sit in the back of the bus. She started a revolution in America, the Civil Rights Movement, which freed the black people from much of the oppression they were suffering. I am saying Martin Luther King's dream was not that Rosa could take her rightful seat in the front of the bus, but his dream was that she could take any seat on the bus, and I would be honored to sit beside her. I am doing the same thing Rosa Parks did. I am standing up against bad laws which dehumanize us and destroy our freedom, just like the Minutemen at Lexington and Concord. We are saying no to an oppressive government which considers us to be slaves rather than free men. I invite people in America to join in our peaceful revolution to regain our freedom. That is how America was started, and we need to keep that tradition alive. Clive D. Bundy wrote that. P.S. Please pass the email along to friends and family. And then he put, uh, P.P.S. Please join us this evening, April 25th, around 6 p.m. for barbecue and some entertainment and a little swim in the river. Bring everyone you know on Bunkersville Road east of I-15, a few miles you can't miss misses. But I'm waiting on the email back on uh, on whether or not they're going to have any uh thing else going on. All right. When I get home, I'll post that on Facebook, too, that letter. Do, do you have it? I imagine she – I didn't check my email today. I imagine there's something from Carol on there. I, I'm on the Carol's email list. I had to work today, so I haven't I haven't even turned on my computer. Yeah, I actually emailed her other email and I haven't gotten nothing back on the on whether or not they're gonna have a, a thing today. I mean a, a performances today. I wanted to get a list. Yeah, we need to get Ted Nugent out there. Yeah, we need to. I mean he he, he loves freedom just as much as everyone else. Yeah, but he's not gonna get involved in that. I don't believe he'll get involved in it anyways. How's Barbie today? She, she, she's she what? Be back there in the background. She's back there in the background doing something. Catching I up heard her phone or something. Vibrate. Yeah, she's she's here. I know she is. I heard her phone vibrate. Oh. Uh, well, that might have been my phone, though, because mine does it, too. Huh. That's real patriot. I'm back. I got kicked off for some reason. What's going on, man? Nothing. <laughs> I'm just sitting here at the airport waiting for a ride. I drive taxi. So surprisingly, I actually have someone that picks up calls. I just call the right number, which is their Washington office. And uh, they, I'm, who's here? Anyone? Four, four, four. Oh, yeah, I recorded the conversation, and it's like the person on the phone, like, I don't know if you ever call in to a congressman or anything, but sometimes those people actually have their own email addresses, and I was, for some reason, they wouldn't take that, so I guess I should just post this to YouTube or something. I recorded yeah. the conversation. Just kind of annoying. False, made, made false accusation and everything, and there's, anyways, I'll let you know when it's posted. I can change my 
Hey, do you know if you can change your uh, YouTube name? Uh, I don't think so. Not without starting a new account. Now I've got a cheat. Guess I'll just do that. Uh, who am I talking to? Let's go to one. There are two participants in this conference. This conference call is being recorded. You know, you know I, I recorded uh, talking to uh, one of Rand Paul's people. Cool. I'm going to post it to YouTube because uh, I think he made a false accusation about Bundy. There we go. Let's go to YouTube. We do. Are you okay? For me? Ten four. I'm just growling at my computer. It's telling me invalid credentials. What the hell does that mean? I'm putting it means your password's wrong or your username is wrong. Okay, the password is it means you're entering in something incorrectly. Please try again. I have tried so many freaking times. And I had it on Save Me and now it, it's just gone. Oh, I know what it is. Sure wish I could type it fast. Uh, you should see I'm I'm picking
Oh, oh shit, if you, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to let you guys listen to me, guys, I'm sorry. We gotta do something about this new button situation. <laughs> I've been, please fix my iPad so I can get that new button easier without hanging up on everybody. Oh, you Hi. Oh. Okay, guys, I gotta hang up for a minute so my husband can fix my cover so I can hit my new button better. I'll be right back. Have you posted that YouTube link yet? Hey, what's up? It's Brian for like five minutes. Hey, Brian. Uh, Barbie just stepped away for a minute. This Tim. So, man, yeah, she just uh, figured out what she was doing wrong, not being able to get into the control panel. I'm sure she'll tell you. It's kind of a funny story. Gotcha, gotcha. But, uh, yeah, at least now it's uh, reactive. Um, I don't know if you're a fan on Facebook or the community conference calls page, but I just posted up uh, about the call later tonight. Yeah, man. If, uh, if you can get some views, you can reshare the crap out of that for me. That'd be great. I am. I've already sent it to a bunch of people. Uh, I'm going to try to get a bunch of them on here tonight that I've been telling about. And a couple of them have called in once or twice, but not a lot. But um, I'm going to actually brought, we're going to have a thing here in the in the tasting room tonight. It's going to be a bunch of people listening in just on my line. Okay. It, um, I got a question for you. What's uh, up, brother? I got a few minutes. I'll try to. Gotcha. No, it's just a quick question. You going to have, you going to be on moderating tonight? Yeah, yeah. Barbie and I should both be uh, able to be on there moderating. Good deal. Good deal. Hey, how you been, Brian? What's up, man? Yeah, I've been good. I've been good. Uh, been a little weird where I work, but outside of that, you know, just making do with these, getting some calls done. Some people I haven't all gotten back to yet, trying to catch them in the order they were received, also by importance, directly related to, you know, what I'm trying to do. Not that anybody else is unimportant, had I not gotten back to them yet. Just trying to make do with what I got, man. If I was an octopus with just as many faces, that'd be great, but I'm not. Cool. But other than that, I'm cool, man. Um, trying to just, uh, you know, move forward with this little project. It's been kind of cool so far. Um, I haven't been that active lately just because the whole money situation's died down. But, you know, knowing that we've got a VIP on the call, I'd be happy to help make it work. Plus, it's Friday and Saturday. They're better nights for me to be on here, you know, the most. I didn't even come on last night. Hopefully, Barbie uh, handled it the best she could. But, yeah, uh, yeah it's been exciting, man. Yes, yeah, she does. She does. If, uh, if I own this business where I'm at, I probably would have hired her as secretary of administration already. She's a, a huge asset to the program. And so I put up that crowdfund the other day. I know I'm asking for a moderate amount, not as much as other projects, but something to help keep this going, you know, as far as, you know, equipment and keeping her sustained and helping comms one get a new phone and a better radio to use, you know, better scanner of sorts, you know, just to kind of as a thank you from the crew for doing as much as they've done thus far. Yeah. And tonight, too, um, you may want to just make mention and suggest anybody that being we will more than likely have a big crowd on here, uh -huh. uh, you know, to get Skype or something other than your cell phone constantly. Um, you know, it's like I told Barbie, I'd been on every since the second night and, uh, you know, pretty much around the clock I had it playing too. And I didn't realize that it could be an issue, even though you have unlimited time. Uh, but now I've got the Skype set up, so I just let it play pretty much all the time. Cool. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, you know, I'll definitely mention that, that they could call in the same way. Uh, phone jack was having a little issue, I guess, getting on the call. Some people were having success, some people weren't. But, uh, but yeah, hopefully people don't blow up their phone minutes and go broke trying to listen in on the call. That's why they actually have the rebroadcast as well. I think those are, they're not real time. There's like a minute delay or stuff, but they can still hear the Q&A and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah, so there's only two guys in here right now, but I'm sure that'll uh, definitely grow by the end of the night. Just I, I repost or I, I posted up the exact time, so hopefully between now and then, uh, don't get a little pissed off or excited. It, there should be up around 9:30 Central when they were going to be calling us. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll post it to your page. Also, this okay. uh, video I just made of uh, trying to get Stand trying point. to get uh, another response from Ryan Paul in his office. So I'm just going to start doing that because I think what he did was wrong. Mostly yeah. accused Bundy. Super Barbie's back. Hey, Barbie, it's Brian. I just called in for a quick second. Having a quick smoke break, but I got to go back in. So the floor is yours, young lady, and the dog, too. I'll check your page later. You can check it out if you want. But, uh... Hey, Brian. Yeah. While you're smoking, excuse the dog barking. He's only doing I just wrapped that up, actually, but go ahead. Uh, we're going to launch a full-out media campaign, too, and we're going to start <laughs> recording the media and asking them why they feel they have the right to make these accusations. And we're going to post it all over the web. Okay, all, right. all right, I got to go, but I'll be back later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hey, guys, guess what? My mute can hit my mic button. It works now. Oh, I know what else I forgot to do. Ta-da! Now I have all of it back. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. Florida one. Hmm. That's me. That's Florida One. This is Tim. Hi, Tim. How's your day going? Been busy getting ready for tomorrow. You're going to be gone tomorrow, huh? Yep. It's a long festival tomorrow from 11 a.m. till 9 p.m. So 
I won't be around much tomorrow. Are you going to be the auctioneer tomorrow? No, actually, tomorrow I'm doing a big wine festival uh, up in Lynchburg. It's some kind of music and wine festival. Oh, okay. I don't really like wine. Well, that's not true. There is one wine I like. It's that one that you warm it up and it tastes like apple pie. Yep. It. Uh, we make uh, one really similar to that. It's a... Uh, um, uh, sangria that we make in the winter time that we actually warm in a crock pot. Uh, it's like apple cider warmed with cinnamon sticks in it and it, people go crazy over it. Hmm. What is the name of it? Because I've looked for it. I had a taste of it at the Pennsylvania Farm Show and that's where I fell in love with it and I thought, oh my god, this stuff is so good. Ours, we actually make fresh. It, uh, you can't rebottle it, uh, because of the fresh stuff we put in it. It would, uh, re- start to re-ferment and blow the corks out the bottle. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. I would like some of it. If you happen to come across any that is in a bottle, because when I taste it was up in Pennsylvania, and I should have wrote the name down, and I didn't. We have a watermelon wine that people just go crazy over, and um, we're actually in the experiment experimenting stages right now of a um, blueberry and a strawberry wine, and um, we're just now starting to experiment with the recipes on them and try to. Uh, Hopefully within the next 30 days, get some. Cool. Let me know. I might have to order a couple bottles to have you send them out here to me. That way when I have company, you know, when y'all come visit me, I can offer you some wine. Yep. uh, We actually have uh, the owners. They made several sweet wines. Uh, People really like them uh, at the wine festival. Normally, I'd say I'm probably the top seller at every festival I do. I believe it. You can be a people person when you want to be, when I can get you to turn off the mute button. Right. So, did Brian tell you what's going on tonight? Yes, ma'am, he sure did. Okay, you going to be here? Yep, I'm going to actually have a whole room of people in the tasting room listening in. Cool. Michigan 10, checking in. Hey, Michigan 10, how you doing this morning? Afternoon. Afternoon already, pretty good. Waiting to hear the big news, a few people know already, but in time we'll all know, I suppose. Michigan 10, you don't know yet? No, no. Florida 1. Welcome back, Florida 1. Okay, Michigan 10. Tonight, sometime after 9 o'clock, around 9.30-ish, sometime in there, uh, Clive Bundy's going to come talk to us, hopefully. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. That That's a first, ain't it? Um, On the conference call? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I'm hoping it'll go good. I'm hoping everybody will mind their manners. Well, you better learn how to use those mute buttons and just mute everybody out except for Clive. It'll be all set, and then you can open it up after that. I think we're going to put the Q&A mode on. That way, it'll be a little more organized. There you go. Well, that's exciting. I don't even know why. Uh, I, tried to, I tried, to, uh, tried to upload a, a video and it's like unable to publish. Hmm. How long is it? I just heard the uh, YouTube like 10 minutes ago. Did you minimize the page while it was uploading? Yeah, st- it's standard. I uploaded a it's standard video. Took it take about seven minutes to upload. I'm re-uploading it again. All right, well, let me know when you have it uploaded. All right. Peace. Peace. Hey, welcome in, caller. Ah, I saw it before the ding. Okay, anybody got else, anything else they'd like to say? Come on, guys. Don't let me hang. No new news today. Just the last update we got was from last night. Um, Yes, sir. That's all I've heard. I uh, didn't get any reports from anybody of any boots checking in. Well, that's a good sign. Yes, sir. Hopefully, I'll get some that will check in this afternoon. Afternoon's fading fast, uh, 418 here in Michigan. 318 where you're at, I think. Yes, sir. Yep, I haven't been able to get on, uh, see what new stories there are online yet today, so we'll see what's up with that later, I suppose. Hey, Barbie, this is Buckeye One, do you hear me? Hey, Buckeye One, welcome back. I was wondering where you were at. Uh, my doctor gave me some bad medicine, or some new medicine for my diabetes, and I've been listening, but I've had the worst headache ever. For like three days, I had to get off the medicine, so it just really wasn't feeling like talking. I hope Did y'all just, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was go ahead. Listening last night. A little bit. I just, I just saw the news. Did you know that, um, Mr. Bundy's going to be on tonight at 9.30? Yes, sir. That's pretty cool. Fun to know. Pardon me? I was the second one to know after he yep. reached it. <laughs> That's good. It'll be between 9 and 9.30. There's not a definite set time. But he was sitting out on the front porch with Buddha last night when Buddha called in. And I put everybody on hold and was talking to Buddha. And I was talking to Kristen. And I think we, it's going to be good tonight. Yep. It's good every night. Well, I don't know. Last night got a little bit out of control. I know. Yeah, you, you, 
Go ahead. I did hear you've got a control. I'm sorry, sir. I did hear you've got, con you've got a control panel now, right? Yes, sir, I do. Congratulations on the promotion. Don't spend all the money in one place. I know, right? <laughs> also, this is that donation of the touchscreen monitor. You know, I, I could really use that touchscreen monitor, y'all. I would, but honey, I think you know my story a little bit. I have absolutely no income right now. I know. Guess I what? Did a little, I did a little job last week, but I never know when they're going to come in and out. Well, I went to the doctor again today. Mm -hmm. It was horrible. They made me sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. I actually fell asleep twice on my, sho my husband's shoulder. Uh, I used to have a doctor that would do that, and I would sign in. I would try to make the appointments as early as possible so they wouldn't be too far behind. But I would sign in and then count how many people were ahead of me, and I'd just leave for an hour or so and then come back. By the time you got in and out of there, it was like a four-hour ordeal. That's just not right. I agree. But I got my ultrasound done. That's good. Are you okay? Is everything okay? Um. Well, the the ultrasound technician said that the doctor's going to have to sit down and review the pictures better. And uh, they will send it to my family doctor, and he will get with me next week. Yeah, I know how that goes. So I sat there, and I was joking around with her and talking to her. And through my power of persuasion, I said, come on, how long have you been doing this stuff? She said, over uh -huh. years. I said, well, you know what to look for. How many tumors have you seen? And she said, thousands. I said, well, that doesn't look fibroid to me. And she said, no, it doesn't. So we'll see. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, they can do a lot. Well, the where, where it's positioned at, I really think they could just cut under my skin and pop it right out like a zit. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be a kind of a bigger zit because, I mean, it's almost the size of a small egg now. So. Yeah. Well, I know 10 years ago, my dad was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was uh, stage 4 in his bones and everything, and we were getting ready for, you know, when it's stage 4 in the bones, you know, you're like, wow. And, um... They dealt with it, and it, 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 what he has, the type of lymphoma he has is not curable, but it's very slow growing, and they've dealt with it once since then, and he's still with us. And I remember my youngest son, because that was 10 years ago, I remember my youngest son graduated last year, and I remember thinking, well, Lord, if you could just keep him here until he sees my, my kids out of school. So he's made that, he's made it that far, and yes. still, he won his club champion. He's almost like a pro golfer. He won his club championship like three years ago. So he's still in very good health, but uh, well, I just pray that, yeah, I pray that one of these days something else takes him because that is a nasty way to go from what I hear. Yeah, I agree. Where they find a cure for it, and I think they've even gotten better in the last 10 years since he was diagnosed. Well, see, mine's in a really weird spot. If you put your finger there at your collarbone, right in the center, and you're mm -hmm. down the middle of your chest, and you get, you know, below that breast area to where that bone is, you know, right where mm -hmm. you're come over. And then, uh, like, two fingers to the left. That's where mine's at. It's a really have they, patient. Have they, have, have they done a biopsy on it yet, or what are they doing? No, I mean, we, we just found it, and that, that's why we had the ultrasound done. Yeah, yeah. Next will probably be a biopsy. And I'm going to tell yeah. them, you know, just skip the biopsy. I don't care if it's benign or not. You can do the biopsy. Just after. Break it out. Just cut it out. Yep. <laughs> yep, you don't want no foreign things in your body. I got enough of that. Yep. I'm going to be praying. I'll be praying for you. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Okay, we got a whole room full come in here now. I guess everybody realized I was back on and everybody wants to come in and say hi to me. Hi. Hi, how are you today? Fine, how are you? Who am I, who am I speaking with? I'm Barbie. Hi, Barbie. This is Martha from Colorado. I just uh, saw your page and thought I'd call and listen to what people had to say. I have so much to say. I, there's not enough hours in the day. I can sit here for 22 hours and talk. <laughs> I drive these guys nuts. It's great. That has been verified. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good that something can be verified. There's a lot of things going around. Yes, ma'am. So what did you see on my page? Excuse me? What did you see that made you call in? Well, it was shared by a, a fellow patriot, and I just wanted to call and see what the conversation was about. Well, the topic of conversation usually revolves around the Bundys and right. the patriots and the Oath Keepers and the militiamen. And anything that they need, we try to get to them um, through various different means that we have right now. Uh, we also try to make sure from the outside in we can protect them. We try to verify any rumors that we hear. We try and switch the media at every chance we get. And we're about to start mounting a full-out media campaign for all these idiots putting out those headlines that are not true. And then we're going to post their responses back to them. That sounds fantastic. I'm absolutely in full support. Um, 
not just of the Bundys and, and of all the wonderful men and women that have been there and stayed there, but of our Constitution as a whole. Yes, ma'am. I have three grandchildren. I actually was at the Bundy Ranch about a week ago. Uh, I got there Sunday, right after the confrontation at the gate. Uh, that was Saturday, and I got there the, the next day. I have three grandchildren. I really want them to be able to breathe free air. Yeah, and it, it's a scary thought because there's a possibility they might not be able to. It is. It is. I'm sorry. I get a little emotional. I didn't. Um, I didn't realize. I, I knew how far we'd gone, but it just didn't hit home until I came out there and saw it. And, and uh, it's a good thing that now you know because now you can talk to your friends about it, and they'll talk to their friends about it, and that's just more people that are waking up to what's going on nowadays. And the more people that we have, you know, to pull together to support each other, the more we can get done. Well, that was one of the reasons that I, that I went because we, I think we all tend to see news stories and hear things and, and think, well, that's terrible and gosh, I wish that wasn't happening, but it's not a personal thing. And I hope that by going there, it would become personal to, even if it was just my friends and family, it was them, it was now personal, something personal to them because their grandma was out there. And I think that every single person that was there probably has a huge sphere of influence that had they not gone, there's a lot of people in their sphere that would not have, you know, thought that it was personal, that wouldn't have thought it was affecting them. So maybe that is what it will take to get people to wake up is for enough of us to attend and put ourselves in that position so that it becomes personal. And I apologize, that's one of my grandchildren in the background. That's that's one of the things I love about the conference call. You can sit and type all day on Facebook. And the feeling and the emotion isn't there. It's not right. It's desensitized. But when you pick up that phone and you call into this conference call, you know there's people on the other end. And right. we're going to talk to you, and we're going to talk about the issues that you want to talk about. And it, it makes a huge difference. It makes the emotional investment in it all that much more concentrated and deeper. Right. I was very upset when I did get home and got to hear Harry Reid's interview where he said these were not grandmothers. I just, I wish I could, he could have seen me through the television jumping up and going down. Yes, we were. Yes, we were. You don't sound like a domestic terrorist. No, no. I bake bread. I make cookies. I cook food. I babysit. I don't think that I fit the, the profile of a domestic terrorist. Well, now let me tell you, Mr. Harry Reid, in his infinite wisdom, put out a list of 72 items that will make you a domestic terrorist. I am very proud to announce to everybody that out of that 72 item list, I qualify under 60 and a half. Good for you. How and, many you got to turn out? Uh, uh, um, 72 minus 60. Uh, uh, plus hmm. 11 and a half, because there's one I have a half done on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where can we find that list? Um, I believe somebody posted on our community conference call webpage. Our okay. page, it's a Facebook group. There's a right. lot of information on there if you want to check it out. Mm -hmm. And if you're, are you on Facebook, ma'am? Uh, I, I am, yes. Well, not right at the moment, but yes, I'm on Facebook. Do you got paper and pen? Sure. I'm going to give you my name so that you can add me on Facebook. That way, if you forget the conference call number, you can just, Barbie, where is it at? And I'll make sure you can come back in and talk to us. Okay, thank you. My name's Barbie, just like a Barbie doll. B-A-R-B-I-E. Right. The middle initial is L. Right. My last name is Rogers, R-O-G-E-R-S. Okay. And I'm sorry, I know you're a grandma, but my profile picture is a little tiny peanut, and he's holding up a sign that says, are we all just fucking nuts? <laughs> you know, that's kind of cute. It is. <laughs> you don't think something like that would come out of that sweet little voice, would you? No. <laughs> Not at all. But she can, Barbie can go out and hunt and kill an animal and bring it home and cook it and give it to her man. I'm very jealous. <laughs> I can do all those things except the field dressing. I, I don't do that. <laughs> I can call me bread and can over an open fire, and I make my own preserves. Oh, yeah, I can do everything almost. <laughs> I'm not a grandma yet, though. I keep telling my boys they need to get on to that because I want to be a grandma. Well, be careful what you wish for. They're absolutely wonderful, but all three of our children decided to do it within four years of each other. <sighs> so there's three little, three tiny ones running around in my house <laughs> at different times. I can't wait. I would, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. There's, you know, when you're a parent, you have to be responsible and, and do all the right things. When you're a grandparent, you just bake cookies for them and give them juice and sit and hold them. And I don't know, cause when I, when I was raising my boys, I was very lenient on them, but I taught them right from wrong. Right. And I didn't really sweat the small stuff. You know, bedtime, hey, if you get up in the morning without fighting with me, I don't care what your bedtime is. <laughs> You know, it wasn't that simple with us. I just told them, and, and they usually followed the rules pretty good. Yeah. 
a whole lot easier to follow rules even as adults when the rules are based on right and wrong. Yep. Not someone's personal agenda or entity agenda or whatever the powers may be are. Yeah. Those powers may be like to irritate me. Yeah. One thing that I found very touching when I was out there were all the American flags on the Bundy supporter side and the people that were so patriotic. And then when I looked at the videos and the pictures of the federal agents for whatever entity they're working for, there was nothing on them to denote that they were American. They didn't even have the decency to put a red, white, and blue air freshener in their vehicles. Nothing. I well, saw nothing. Okay. One of the newspapers put out a link that had five pictures I hadn't seen before, and I started clicking on the pictures, and my mouse is retarded. It doesn't work half the time. And it must have triple or quadruple clicked on one of the pictures, and it opened up somebody's personal pictures. They took like 400 pictures. Wow. And I'm going through, and then I'm, I'm enlarging all the guys, and I'm taking screenshots of them, and I'm sending them to my friends, and he, he's going to make one at posters for me of all the BML guys that were in those pictures. Well, as, as angry as we get at the big guys like Harry Reid and, you know, his, his ilk, they wouldn't have any power if they didn't have the foot soldiers to follow their orders. That's what bothers me, is that there are so many people willing to follow their orders. Yeah, that's why we say around here, oath before orders. Right. And I think that there's a lot of people in and out of our military, not just, I'm, I'm not just picking on one, one group that just don't get that. There's, there's a lack of honor, honor and integrity and character. Yep. You know, but we're, we're of a generation that doesn't remember anything really bad. You know, that there's, some of us can remember Vietnam. Uh, but other than that, most of our young people have never seen real hardship, you know, real sacrifice, real, uh, commitment. And they don't understand it. And when they do see it, cause it's coming. I think there's going to be an overreaction of people that don't know how to handle it. Agreed. And I'm a prepper, too. <laughs> we have, uh, well, we live in a very remote place that gets closed in by the snow pretty often. So at any given time, I've got plenty of whatever I need to keep the household running for as long as I need to. I like the way you say that. <laughs> was that um, my non-confrontational enough? <laughs> yes. Yeah, my husband gets a little upset with me having stuff here and having stuff there and and stuck piling a little bit too much, he says. But I started couponing, so stuff I'm stockpiling I'm getting for free. So he shouldn't complain too much for me. But luckily, I have a good husband. He's a sweetheart. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, we can conjecture about large things happening, but let's. I remember when I was young, the truck drivers going on strikes because of the gas prices. You know, it wouldn't take but just one good truck driver strike for all the grocery stores to be empty, for the gas stations to be depleted, for the drugstore not to have your medication. And it wouldn't take but two or three days for this to happen. And then what are you going to do? If you don't have some extra things put put aside, how will you provide for your family? How will you, uh, you know, your, your child's not going to be happy with, Mommy, I'm hungry. Well, I'm sorry, darling, the grocery store didn't have any food. That's not going to fill their tummy. Yep. Just, just the basic, you know, if we can we can even take out the, the huge big picture here and just look at the little basic things that, you know, what would happen if you just absolutely couldn't go to the grocery store or go and consume anything for a week? And I think that most people would be in a lot of trouble. I learned how to make bread last summer in a glass box out in the yard. That's incredible. I bake my own bread, but I do it in the oven. I do it in the oven, too, but... <laughs> You know, what am I going to do if I don't have my oven? Right. So I messed with it and messed with it and played with it and played with it, and I figured it out. In a glass bowl or glass jar? A glass box. A glass box. Where do you get a glass box? Um, It was the bottom half of something. I don't know. My, my son put it together for me. That's very ingenious. I think the top was part fish tank. Huh. I would be interested to, learn, to see how that's done. Maybe someday when everything calms down, you can make a YouTube video of how to make bread in a glass box. There, there are YouTube videos on how to do stuff like that. All right. Yeah. Just type in, um, make bread in a, in a glass box. All right. Or make okay. bread, make bread outside. I think there was one under that too. Yeah, my son was asking me about how we, how we go about butchering chickens. And I told him, look it up on YouTube and he laughed at me. He thought it was being funny. He looked it up and sure enough it was there. <laughs> we raised chickens and uh, for the eggs, we haven't butchered any yet. We haven't had a flock survive predators yet to get old enough to butcher. Oh, uh, last night I had, last night or the night before, I think it was last night, I kept hearing something outside my computer room window, and I finally sent my husband out there. I said, there's something heavy. Okay, it was the night before that. But there's something heavy out there because I hear it. So he went out with the flashlight, and he was looking and looking and looking. There's a raccoon out there going up and down the tree and into the leaves. Oh, there's baby birds up on the top. My wow. He chased them off. If it would have been me, I'd have went out with my gun in my hand. 
our last flock was gotten by a bear. We were out of town, and the neighbor was tending to them, and, and a bear got in in the night and tore the pupa apart and killed all the chickens and just made a mess of things. Yeah, I have that so problem we, down then, too. We rebuilt and got another flock of chickens. And, oh. I had a flock of chickens two years ago. I thought they were all peeps, and one of them looked funny, and I asked the man, I said, what kind of peep is this? And he said, I don't know. He said, it's some kind. I said, okay. And it was cute, but it just didn't look quite right. Right. Guess what it was? What? A turkey. Oh, no. <laughs> so she was raised with a flock of chickens, and she thinks she's a chicken. And so you get turkey eggs every now and then? Yep. Well, that's great. Well, I have enjoyed my time here. I'm going to go so some other people can talk, and thanks for making this available, and I thank you for your time. Well, you don't have to go. You can stick around and hang out and listen. There's like seven other people in the room. There's lots of people who do that. That's great. I may call back in a little while. Um, time to go put little one down for his nap. Well, between 9 and 9.30 tonight, we're hoping for Mr. Bundy to come on. Oh, that'd be great. Yep. And that's Central Time? Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. God bless. Same to you. Hey, uh, Barbie, uh, I don't know if you watched the video, but uh, any suggestions if you did? I didn't watch it yet because you guys would have heard it if I would have because I was talking. Oh, okay. But if you want to hold up the conversation for a minute and talk to everybody, Buckeye One's here and he'll talk to you. I can watch it real quick. Yeah, I can talk to everybody. I'm just sort of cooking food. What are you cooking? I'm hungry. So, I guess what's going on, everyone? What are you cooking? I'm hungry. Uh, buttermilk pancakes. No. Organic. Ew, I definitely don't want organic pancakes. Why not? I don't know. It just doesn't sound good. Oh, they're really good. Healthy for you and everything. I, I wish I could give you a jar of preserves to put on top of them. Ew. Oh, no. That's a yummy way. No, not knock until you try it. I even... No, I've tried it before. I don't like preservatives. Try and not preservatives. as healthy as possible. Not preservatives. Homemade preserves. Oh. You know, like jelly? Well, yeah, I got grade A uh, organic maple syrup, so... Ah, okay. Hey, Buckeye One, you want to hop on here and talk for a minute? I think he's still here. This is Florida One. What's up, Florida One? What's going on? Oh. Oh. Who's this again? Uh, Illinois Seven. Oh, all right. Hey, Barbie. Uh, she'll be out uh, back in a couple minutes. Yeah, I know. I heard. I've been on for a while. A long. Actually, I've been on all day. I just keep getting kicked off every time my phone rings. But I call right back. All right. Are you on Skype when you're getting kicked off or just on a regular phone? On Skype. Put the, uh, do you have an iPhone? Yes. Put it on airplane mode and it won't kick you off when you get text or calls. Yeah, I mean, but if I, yeah, but if I do that, then I'm running off my internet on my phone. Oh, uh, I got you. I'm on my Wi-Fi. Okay, hey, this is Comms One. Is there anybody out there? Yeah. What's up, Comms One? Comms One. Who's speaking? Can you hear me? I this is Florida you. One. Uh. Oh, the way you said that, it was like, can anyone hear me? I was like, yeah, yeah, can you hear me? And you didn't answer. <laughs> so I said, come on, can you hear me? <laughs> hey, man. Um, okay. All right, so I'm going to start off by saying this. Um, in a parallel universe, so it's completely theoretical, or actually it's not, I built a fucking, I built a machine that I can travel to a parallel universe. In that universe, I found a major security flaw in that universe's BLM. You catch my drift on the technology side. Yeah, I catch a drift. So, I know all about computer shit. You could talk all that crap to me. Some other people don't know. Transfer protocol on its servers. And it is secured, um, but you're allowed, if you get access to that, um, the main purpose of that is to upload from whoever's going to upload it and receive and be able to access it. Uh, a sharing database. Um, so you can access a lot of different things. Um, also, with this protocol, um, if you uploaded uh, if you uploaded something, um, you, you could do a lot of different. Um, there's a lot of potential, um, and you should know just as well as I do. Uh, if you want to check it out, do you have a VPN on your computer? Because you're going to need it. Yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that on now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and. Give you this URL to type in after you do that because um, I didn't do it for my computer. But um, once you got your VPN enabled, go ahead and. Um, hey, Chris. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. I got to turn my volume back up. Hey, Chris. That was freaking awesome, man. 
If I could reach to the screen and hug you, I would. Well, the thing is, Rand Paul made a false accusation, and he needs to read it. And the only way he's going to get that is if people start doing that. And if that floods, floods YouTube, he's going to have to respond. Otherwise, it's going to affect him if he tries to run for either Senate or uh, for President. What I would do? One. Bitch, though. Keep that in mind. Yes. You need to get in contact other than on this phone line. Why are you? Say that again. You need to get in contact um, in another form of communication. You got Skype? Yeah, I'm on Skype. Well, what I would do is every post that he puts out on Facebook, I would put it in that post and say, are you going to respond to this? Are Look you for a comments about America? Uh, there's like four people talking at once, I think. Go ahead, Barbie. Are you done on the radio? No, uh, hey, uh, comms want to look for A to Z tactical in Skype and all in one word because I'm sorry, Barbie, but yes. I'm sorry I'm cutting you off, but um, I really just found something really important and um, I really don't want to go in too much detail talking on the phone um, for uh, the technological end of this spectrum here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and search you up real quick and I'll let you know if I found you. All right. All right, Chris, what I would do is just keep posting it everywhere. Post it, post it, post it everywhere. Every comment his office puts out, make sure it's posted on it. 10-4. But now, as for a word of advice, um, I could see your face in your reflection of your phone. Just so you know. And I don't think it's that big of a deal. Just a reflection. Yeah, see, I, I would I would have had my face in there, too, you know, because I want everybody to know who I am. But, um... That's John F. Kennedy. Yeah, the other look thing... Look at the birthday. If you look at the birthday, it's the day that he was assassinated. Yeah, I'll fix that. Otherwise, it was, I mean, freaking awesome. Yeah. Post it on my wall. I'm going to make sure I send it to everybody. Cause one, that, that is A-T-O-Z tactical, not to the number two. Sorry, Barbie. No problem. I'm right here. Did you see that video he made, Florida one? No, he hasn't sent it to me yet. I thought... Yeah, I was on here when he went to make it, but he never he never sent it to me. It's freaking awesome, man. Like you see it, it's awesome. I thought he was going to send it to me, too, because he had he sent me a message, but I don't think he... he you didn't send that to me, did you? No, I have a lot of people. Uh, which, what's the name? I thought you already sent it to me. <clears throat> James Sash on Facebook. S-A-C-H-E. Yeah, that was something else. That was the interview. Yeah, that, that, that's why I said I thought you... It was going to send it to me. Now that's the uh, call to Rand Paul's office. Yeah, I was on the phone. I was on here when you, did, when you got off to do that. Um, four to one, I see the request. Um, you should just be get a name. Uh, my name on there is Revolutionary in another line. So it starts with a D, ends with a D. Um, All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call you on there or just start messaging you on there, if whatever you want to do. Um, that would work. Because um, I'm definitely not trying to do any sort of video because if this was intercepted, uh, that will just give visual affirmation for the courtroom. Should that situation arise, even though everything I've ever said on this phone call is 100% theoretical. And, and just so everybody who may be listening now, uh, everything that I've ever said on this phone is in another universe. Yes, yeah, Minnesota checking in. Any uh, new breaking news I don't know about? Um, I'm about to message you real quick, Minnesota, on uh, what I've been talking about. Oh, bunch of stuff. I caught that uh, Mr. Bundy himself is supposed to be calling in tonight. Is that correct, still? Yes. Sir. All right. Well, let's try to look, see if I can get on here then. I was just around 9 o'clock. Okay. Unless something major happens, though, but I foresee him making it. Hey, Tom, just to let you know, I've uh, got both those uh, communication options open there now. Hey, come on. Copy that. Four to one. Damn if I didn't get kicked off again. <laughs> You're on here. Yeah, I got back on. I, I, I got kicked off. I'm... 
Probably because every I just phone, phone, every time my phone rings, it does that. I'm fixing to download this on my computer, but I, and I can't run all the programs on my computer and and talk. Get Skype. I can do this URL. And you get with this VPN enabled. I'm telling you now, you don't want to go on it because there's a big old disclaimer on there uh, that will tell you why you want one. Uh, so. <laughs> Which one are you using? Uh, that way, if if it was, which one are you using? I'll send it to you. Um, because uh, I got three. Well, hold on, I got three computers here. I don't know which one. Is. But we need to discuss the majority of this on the um, other line. Okay, come on. I bounced my dad's on signal off of Russia. <laughs> What's up? Um, I'm back in. So you know. Brian's back in. Yeah. Well, I'm not calling in off my phone line, so just so he knows. I know, I can tell. Shit, dude, I was so shocked that I found this out there. <laughs> My bad, dude. Was it? What do you think about my picture on Skype? <laughs> I don't see it. Hold on. <laughs> That's cool shit. Does it? Yeah, plenty.
Just a reminder, guys, please take a minute and write down some of the questions that you would like to ask tonight. Will do. Whoever's dog that was that just barked in the background got my pit bull all upset. Sorry, I didn't hit the mute back. Trust me, the next parts were even worse. Boy, my computer just blocked a Trojan ADH X on there. <laughs> Y'all. All right, I'll check back later on the twenty is at nine central. Yeah, sure. Nine central. Ten four. Is everybody having a good day? Yes, ma'am. How about you? I'm still kicking. What's everybody out there doing today? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. Oh. Sure. <laughs> and in an answer to your question, ma'am, I'm getting ready to go out there and mow. Well, if you'd like to come do my yard, I would appreciate it. <laughs> if you got the money, I'll be more than happy to do it for you. Yeah, how much is it going to cost? I don't know. What state are you in? Arkansas. I'm in Texas. I think that's all okay. We're all in the Midwest. You border my state. That's pretty close. Yes, it is. I've been there many times. There's nothing to brag about. <laughs> Oh, I have some beautiful landscape up there. On the western side, yeah. But we got mosquitoes big enough they can pick you up and carry you off. Ah, uh, I'd like to see them fight with the Texas mosquitoes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are they bigger out there? Yes, ma'am. Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of cliches, I was always wanted to use the, the, the cliche, you know, not going to stop till the cows come home. And the cows came home. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> who we got out there in Texas? Ma'am. What's your name, sir? Murdoch. Oh, hi, Murdoch. We have another Murdoch that calls in, too, but he's in California. I'm Barbie. I'm the volunteer moderator. Uh, Brian is our main moderator. He'll probably be on around 8 Central Time. Hi. Welcome to the conference call, sir. Ma'am. Welcome to the conference call. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, 
Is there also a chat room that y'all go to? Uh, not really. We have a Facebook page that you can write on if you like. Okay, I think that's where I got this uh, number from. Quite possibly. We like the more humor and human interaction by talking to you instead of the desensitizing interaction by texting and messaging. Oh, I hear you. Uh, I was just on here a while ago when you were uh, when y'all were talking about the videos and stuff, and I was wondering if I could get those URLs. Uh, which videos? We talk about a lot of them. Oh, <laughs> uh, the last one you were talking about. The one that I said was really awesome? Yes, ma'am. Okay, are you on Facebook? Yes, ma'am. Okay, add me. My name is Barbie, B-A-R-B-I-E, middle and middle L, and my last name is Roger, R-O-G-E-R-S. And it's right there on my wall. My personal picture is a little peanut holding up a sign. Are we all just fucking nuts? Uh, okay, there we go. I got you. Yes. I found you. That's not hard to find. I like your picture, too. <laughs> a lot of people like my picture. <laughs> it just explains so much, you know? Yes, it does. But the first video there, it says, My Interaction with Rand Paul's Office. Oh, okay. There it is. I'm going to mute my microphone. I'll still be here, though. All right. Four to one, you still on here? Yeah. You secured yet? Sure. No, I have to upgrade. You have to upgrade? Yeah, it's saying that the... You've heard that uh, the plan isn't available. Is it, it is in this plan. Here, send me a screenshot of what you're experiencing. There's two pages that should open up. It'll say it'll say upgrade now, and then there'll be a regular page. Uh, no, it's a, no, it's, it's say when I go punch into the thing for Ukraine. And it said it's not. Oh, here it is. Here's one that is available. I see. All right. There you go. Premium service is a lot better, but I'm not paying for it. I'm going to go ahead and maybe keep asking me the day I'm going up during the. Hold on. You have to wait a minute to connect. You have to wait a minute for it to connect. I see. But it says upgrade, but it's connecting. Yeah. I have it on my uh, my Mac, but I don't have it on my laptop, so I had to download one. Um, you just download it, man. Yeah, just now. That's what I'm saying. So, do yeah. we have any callers that have any questions, comments, or concerns at this time? All right, I'm officially just flew to Ukraine. <laughs> well, I'm on my I'm en route to Romania right now, so the Ukraine one. Uh, they used to have a lot more service. But, um, for the sake of for the sake of dissipating um, a lot of the sake of dissipating a lot of uh, suspicion, communications between Ukraine and Romania are uh, pretty normal. All right, I'm protected by public goods. I'm ready now. All right. Um, yeah, first, you need to be seated. Uh, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and see this. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm Carrie Smith. I'm in uh, Texas. Hi. Did hello. You, did you say Carrie? Yeah. Well, hello, Carrie. Welcome to the conference call. Oh, well, thank you. Am I early or later? You're right on time, ma'am. <laughs> is, is this an all-day affair? Uh, 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week affair. Okay, good, good. 
so I guess we're, I take it we're waiting on someone uh, to come uh, keep it going. Oh, uh, no, ma'am. I'm right here. I'm the moderator at the moment. I'm just a volunteer, though. I'm Barbie. You're who? My name is Barbie, just like a Barbie uh, dog. Oh, okay. Hi, Barbie. Now, are, are you in Utah? No, Nevada? No, ma'am. I'm in Arkansas. Oh, oh, oh great. Oh, oh, oh great. <laughs> Conference call is open for everybody all over the United States. Okay. Bundy? <sighs> well, this is my first time to tune in. Um, what what have I missed out on? Are the beds coming back or what? Um, I don't think they're going to come back anytime soon, but there's a varying opinions on that. Yeah. It just, it's all conjecture and opinions. Mm -hmm. I guess everyone's heard about um, what's happened here in Texas. Um, the Red River? Well, our Attorney General uh, was told the feds to stay off. Of, they wanted to come in here and take over the, the Texas federal lands, and he said, uh, no way, stay out, and then we're the Republic of Texas. And I was shocked to death to hear that. <laughs> was, that someone say that? Huh? was that Mr. Abbott? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did read that. I was quite proud of it, and I shared it. I did too, ma'am. <laughs> we have um, several Republic of Texas organizations. There must be like maybe about 20 of them. But there's only one that is truly functioning as the government, and they they have representatives. Uh, they even have um, a, a few courts they have set up, real courts. Uh, you can hold court anytime you want to, anywhere. And and I think that's what people don't realize. They think they have to have a bar card, ex-lawyer judge, you know, to to have those. But you don't. You don't have to have lawyers present or anything. And uh, but we have uh, not don't have the teeth to do anything right now you know we're in occupied territory yeah well um we had last night and the night before well not last night the night before last and the night before that we had uh becky williams she's running for governor of texas oh uh-huh and she wants to succeed texas oh all right well we don't need to succeed uh a hundred thousand dollars was put out there showing that we were never annexed to the united states because one nation cannot cannot annex another and so it was just all lies. In fact, uh, the United States, they, they took a vote and said no, but I don't know what happened. I mean, I need to go back and talk to the, to the, uh, the real RT here and find out exactly how that, how the lies got perpetrated. But, uh, we're still a republic. <laughs> we're just occupied, you know, because we've allowed the corporation to move in and capitalize everything, make everything corporations. There's something about, um, when Texas joined the United States, and I don't, I don't remember exactly how she said it, Texas was originally part of Mexico, and they joined the United States, and the way they set it up, Texas is the only state in the United States that could succeed from the United States and become its own state, its own country. Hmm. I've never heard that. Um, yeah, she has She has a brilliant plan. If she can execute it the way she talks about it, mm -hmm. it's just awesome. There's no documentation that... We were never anything but a republic and that we were ever a sovereign state and, and had joined with the United States. Uh, so I, I, I think that some representatives went to Washington DC and they wanted it and it was actually voted down there that they, they weren't permitted to. And I think they came back and I think maybe rumor just got, got started around. They didn't have newspapers. I don't know what happened, but I'll see if I can get more information. From the guys that, uh, they've got all the real old, 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 and true law books. Well, we'd love to hear more about it. We have a lot of Texans call in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, everybody wants to secede. Or, you know, that thinks that we, uh, have to do that, but I thought the Constitution gave every state the right to secede, and that's what the, um, the Civil War that was really a war for independence actually was was the southern states just trying to secede from the Union. It, it's very hard and complicated, and then they write it up in legal language so we can't understand it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they've thrown away all of the true history books. I have a couple of friends, uh, one in Florida and one here. Uh, both went to libraries. One was working in a library, and just every year they toss out all of the old history books and uh, spiritual and anything biblical out of the libraries. So there's just no way to go and check. Hey, Murdoch, are you still here? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Murdoch's also from Texas. What do you got to say about all that, Murdoch? Oh, I would love to succeed. I'm surprised we haven't done it yet. <laughs> 
Well, we've got a functioning Republic of Texas. In fact, Biden invited anyone to come to their meetings. They meet every month and have been regularly for years. And they have a website you can go to, um, CERN. My computer's all messed up because I had to, uh, you know, go for Windows 7 and I have lost a lot of my stuff. But uh, I'll try to get that, you know, where to go, the link for you. All right. And you can read the whole story there, how we were always a public and never were a state. What happened was we, we uh, were trying to help the southern states fight for their independence, for them to become a nation. And, um, of course, we got involved in that defeat. Well, I'm going to disappear a little bit. I'll be right back. Um, I'm going to go find that link for you, Mr. Murdoch, okay? Uh, I'm looking at uh, Wikipedia right now, and it's oh, okay. talking about it. Okay. That was fast. <laughs> it's just really going to take the people rising up, understanding who they are, that... Uh, for years, they've been giving a corporation jurisdiction over themselves. Anytime they're sent something in the mail, if they don't return it, it's like a contract. They're consenting to it, whatever it is. And we have all these contracts with this corporation, and just little by little, we, we've, we've given everything we own to them without even realizing it. Um, you know, our cars, the, the car titles, it's very difficult to, to get a car. Uh, it, it actually belongs to uh, the government and we're just commercial drivers renting it. Um, there's just so much that has happened because we're so dumb about, you know, true law. But these guys uh, that are in this organization, they're way, way, way ahead of the pack. I mean, um, we can get a lot more justice through international law than we can. Our common law has been conjoined with uh, the um, equity, you know, and commercial so badly that, you know, we just will never get justice there. They, they they can change it at will at any time they want to. They don't. Ha I don't think their constitution that they take oath to is the constitution of uh, the small U United States of America. I think that their constitution is a constitution a, a, a corporation, ten square mile confederacy. Y'all y'all guys know about that, don't you? That they they really have no property other than ten square miles. And, um, huh. anyway, I'll be back. I'm going to go get, I've heard, get about that. I've heard about some of that. Uh -huh. but I've never been able to verify it. And well, there's, there's plenty of proof. And if you're going to find it, I think that, um, this, uh, website, did you find the link? What is it called? Republic of Texas dot us or something? USA or I mean, US? No, we probably wouldn't have US on it. Well, if you find it, please pass it on to us. Okay, well, I'm going to, uh, I'll come back on, I'm going to go see if I can get Rich to see if he wants to talk on here and he can really explain a lot. Okay, I'll be back. TSL.texas.gov forward slash exhibits annexation forward slash part five. <laughs> Questions okay. and answers. How about a little bit slower? <laughs> How about Republic, I, uh, Republic of Texas, how's it going dot gov? Uh, www.tsl.texas.gov mm -hmm. forward slash. It. Okay, I'll be back. I don't think that's it. Like I told you, there's uh, lots of false ones out there. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll call you back. Just paste it on the wall for me. Sure. Thank you. Not a problem, man. Let me go to it first. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting.
That gum, Miss Barbie, you keep typing that fast, your keyboard's gonna catch on fire. That wasn't me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Carrie. I'm back. Welcome back, Carrie. Uh, y'all know the other um three people on on this line. Oh, did it say there's only three? Because I see more than three. Oh, oh, yeah. It says that there's six. And so there's you, me, and Murdoch. Well, you would be number seven then. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 and and you know them all, huh? Okay, here's the deal. You can go to YouTube and just uh, Google uh, the YouTube documentary on Republic of Texas, and you can learn quite a bit there. And the website, and this is really, really uh, the best one, is TexasRepublic.info. I guess you put in www, I'm not sure, dot texasrepublic.info, all small. Okay, and um, I couldn't get rich. He was too busy, but um, there's a bunch of wonderful men here in Texas. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, are you, here in, are you in Texas, Mr. Murdoch? Oh, yes, ma'am. Mm, where, oh, I guess they're not asking that, huh? I'm in our, uh, Crockett, Texas, ma'am. Oh, that's a wonderful place. What, what a great name for a place, huh? Yes, ma'am. Name, named after David Crockett. He, uh, stopped here on the way to the Alamo to take a leak on a pine tree, so they named the town after him. <laughs> hey, man. I am related. What did, what'd you say? Somebody said something. Did I interrupt the discussion or? Uh... No, ma'am. Not at all. No, ma'am. I'm actually working with somebody at the moment, so I'm here, but I'm um, there too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, well, is there a particular time we're supposed to come on, and, and there's uh, there's going to be like a recap, or um, I can tell y'all, my husband is writing a book calling "Tolerating Tyranny," and it really walks people through their choices and biblically supports, <clears throat> really teaches. Um, Romans 13, like, you know, the government wouldn't like us to uh, think at all because um, Romans 13 is talking about everybody, including the public servants. So, um, oh, it's, it's really going to be a good book. So uh, maybe I can get him on here. And uh, he's, he does some radio interviews. He's done a few, but he's a pastor of a church. <clears throat> well, I, I would highly suggest calling and letting us know first because um, it is an open, unmoderated conference call, uh -huh. and passions get really high and intense. Oh, I bet. Yeah. And I don't want him to come on and accidentally get insulted by um, somebody not speaking appropriately in this room. Oh, yeah. No, he wouldn't do that. I mean, he wouldn't. Uh, I don't. He's he's not a force. I mean, he he doesn't bring things up that he, he, I would. I mean, I just blurt stuff out but he's a lot more um thoughtful like that <laughs> i might offend somebody because i just say what i think but um huh, i sure hope this abbott fellow um uh -huh. i sure hope he's for real i got a phone call i'll be right back please hold on a second okay we'll miss you now what was her name again that would be barbie barbie that's right Well, have they had some pretty heated uh, discussions on here? I have no idea, ma'am. This is my first time on. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just now heard about it today. Yeah, I just heard about it last night. <laughs> I had gotten on another one, and uh, it's when they were right in the middle of all that alderall on the Bundy Ranch. 
I guess Bun Tree. I guess it's not. It wasn't really the ranch. So, are you a rancher? Uh, no, ma'am. I believe in my property rights, though. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I gotta tell you something. Um, we we had a dispute over a boundary line. Uh, we were sold this property, and the ex property owner uh put in the fence and he put it in wrong he put it um about 20 feet on, on one corner too far onto his own property <laughs> and so there was a nice pie shape there that we always thought was ours you know for, for 30 years and we planted trees and um and berry bushes and all kinds of things and they're trying, trying to make a barrier between us and neighbors just to have more privacy so then he sold, he was trying to sell that and wanted to just move the fence over where it was supposed to be. And, uh, I was pretty upset because we had gone to a lot of trouble and gone out, you know, and, and had some big old pine trees and things. And they, he didn't have anything on his property. I mean, it was just like bald. So whoever bought the property would have liked to have had, you know, the, and they were just going to put cows on there. I guess just let them eat all that up. Uh, any, any small wild plum trees coming up. So we had this, uh, lawyer that goes to our church. And, uh, he came up with a law that, that was called, um, the, um, let's see, oh, let me, just give me a second to think. It was called, um, something possession, um, oh, yeah. well, it'll come to me in a minute, but it was called adverse possession, the right to the property by adverse possession, meaning we had worked it, we thought it was ours that all those years, and so uh, we um, claimed that we owned it. <laughs> and the law was on our side. They couldn't do anything about it. About it. I'm sorry, I need to interrupt a second. Florida One, are you on here? Florida One? Florida One, I need you to reply, please. <laughs> so, Dr. Murdoch? Are you still there? Hold on. Yeah, we got I don't know what's going on. It's coming slurping. Uh, I need I need to get Florida One on the phone immediately. I'm here. Okay, could you please ring my phone line, please? Immediately. Yes. Yeah. What is the echo? Sorry about that, y'all. I accidentally hit the wrong button and disconnected myself. I'm back. This is Murdoch. <laughs> <sighs> Did you hear my story about the adverse possession? No, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> okay. I went to hit my microphone, mute my microphone, because I was going to call. Oh. And I accidentally hit the uh, disconnect button. <laughs> oh, okay. So I was telling a story about a, a pie-shaped piece of property on, on our, our property. The previous owner had put the fence too far onto his the side the part that he was going to keep and so all these years we thought that that pie piece was ours and we had put trees all over it and berry bushes and all kinds of wild plum trees and things and so he went to sell his piece of property and he wanted that back and wanted to put the fence back you know and taking all those trees and just let uh the new people's cows eat, eat them all down all of it and so um so we found a law called uh, this adverse. We tried to claim that land by adverse possession, and there wasn't anything they could do about it. They had to give that to us. But we we went wow. ahead and conceded it since it wasn't ours. But we just had the stipulation that they would never, you know, cut down the trees because there were some big old pine trees we had planted. They were huge, and and the his property didn't have any trees on it. So um. Anyway, I was wondering how come we couldn't just claim our entire property by adverse possession, <laughs> you know, and get our land patents back that way. You I'd can. Ask, pardon? You can. Oh, okay. You know for sure? Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, are you? have you had some law experience? Uh, I went to uh, junior college, studied law oh, for a couple okay. of years. Well, and you've, had, you've heard of that law then? Yes, ma'am. How about that? You're the first one I've, I've run into. <laughs> Uh, you can also try uh, looking under squatters' rights. Okay. Uh huh. How long was the fence there? Uh, I think the, over at five that years. Time it, was, it, was, it was thirty years. About thirty years. Uh huh. That land is legally y'all's. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they, we knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess the whole um, shebang is ours too, right? <laughs> uh, any place that is enclosed by that fence, yes. Okay. I think that we just pay stuff we don't have to pay, but um. <laughs> Don't always know how to handle. Uh, oh boy, there's there's some people coming up with some good ways to handle the the big them. But um, so I sure hope I'm not stirring up anything in the, in, 
Am I causing some emergency session or something? <laughs> not that I'm aware of. <laughs> okay. Well, I think she went to get the cavalry or somebody. I'm not sure. Or maybe she just went to get someone because she was getting some people online here. Well, I think I'm going to log out a while, and um, I'll come back on a little later. All right, ma'am. Have a blessed day. Uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Murdoch. Same to you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye. I hope everybody didn't run away. No, ma'am. We're, I'm still here. That's not what you want to hear, though. <laughs> I'm happy that everybody's here when they're here. I just had a scary phone call I had to handle. And I'm trying to text message and um, it's not getting anywhere. Okay. Anybody have any information on banksters? Bankster? Yeah. Want to Google that for me? <laughs> but I don't use Google. Oh, okay. Well, Bing it for me. That and Vanderbeek. B-E-E-K. Banksters, the economic collapse. What year? What year? Yeah. Oh. Uh, it just says the next one. It's referring to the Great Depression and all that. Oh, great. And what about uh, Vanderbeek? V A N D E R B E E K. Mm, born in 1977, film and stage actor. I don't think so. Right. <coughs> uh, all this is giving me is uh, family history and everything. Does he look like anybody that needs to be worried about? Investigate it. Uh, Nevada Governor David Lee Roy Vanderbeek. Oh, great. <laughs> I would say, yeah. <laughs> I wonder what the tie is between him and Banksters. Why would that both... Uh, this man has never talked to me before, so he has no reason to lie to me. Why would he tie the two of them together in a message to me? Okay. He uh, probably thinks... Oh, uh, I'm looking at that site for the governor... And uh, it's saying that he wants expansion of personal freedoms, and he'll take election after the 2014 election in Nevada, and support the whole United States, restoring constitutional law, natural rights, the rule of law, and freedom in all choices. Now, if you believe a politician, that's a good thing, but... <laughs> no, I don't. I don't blame me. I don't either. Florida one, back. Welcome back, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Just let me know. You're welcome. Um, I'll let you know. I, I'm getting messaged by somebody else, and they're talking about banksters and Vanderbeek and them being put together. And it's kind of scary. Too many theories and rumors of superstitions, and I've learned more in the last week than I ever wanted to know. <laughs> so, let's do a public service update. It is 4.55 p.m. Central Standard Time. And my phone just had to make noise. Sorry about that. <laughs> You're on an open, unmoderated conference call. Moderating capabilities are available. However, we choose to leave it unmoderated so everybody can speak their mind. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to ask them, express them, or state them. And we're here to talk to you. The main topic of conversation is funding and anything we can do to protect them, keep them safe. And my phone went off again. <laughs> and... We're also making sure the militia gets anything that they need and the Oath Keepers and the Patriots on the ground there protecting the Bundy. Any questions, concerns, comments? Hmm. Am I echoing? No, ma'am, you're not. Sorry about that. I had to mute myself out for a minute. <laughs> That's okay. I've muted myself out so much, I'm... Well, actually, my voice sounds better now that I can drink again. So, you should have heard me this morning. Like... Why do you, you talk again? Huh? Okay, you're still anonymous. Do what? You're still anonymous. I can't hear you. You're still anonymous. Oh, it says that on there? Yes, sir. 
Oh, that's because I'm calling on the uh, Skype. Yeah. I have to figure out this connection with Van Street. Why are people connecting him with Banksters? Banksters wants to have a little of depression. I can't hardly hear you. Are you talking into the phone? I mean, into the computer? Is that better? Not much better. Why? I have it the same way I had it yesterday. I don't know. Hold on a second. Uh, Miss Barbie, can you add me so I can uh, text message you? Yes, certainly. Yeah. Talk now. Did you send Did you send me a friend request? Yes, ma'am. Still not very loud. Oh, there you are. There you go. Now you're in the inner circle. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, here you go. There's the uh, relation right there. Okay. I'm going to move out a second. There is a guy here on Facebook who says that uh, Mr. Bundy doesn't recognize the Constitution, so why should he uh, have any rights? <laughs> Idiot. Was this dude an elected governor? Uh, yes, ma'am. He'll uh, take office in uh, 2015, I believe. I'm sorry, 2014. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Good afternoon, Big Red Logistics One, check it in. Welcome back, Big Red. What is new in the hood, so to speak? Um, not much. Well, besides the fact that mainstream media is trying to make Bundy look out to be uh, freaking racist, but eh, we'll just kick that one under the rug. Now, when I first um, saw the clip, I was like, are you serious? And then um, doing more research into it, I found the whole clip. I'm like, oh, <laughs> what a surprise, trying to slander the guy's character. Like, I didn't see that coming. I know, right? Sensationalized media at its best. Yeah. Well, you want to talk about socialism, come drive in New York or uh, New Jersey all day with me. You'll see uh, <laughs> plenty of socialism. Ugh. I've been to New York before. I know exactly what you're talking about. 
Yeah, well, lucky me, I didn't have to cross that fucking river today. That's tomorrow. Uh, good looking, that. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather stab myself in the eye with a fork. <laughs> I'm just being honest there. I mean, I, I think I would feel better. So what's up with you today, sir? Hmm. Big red. Uh, not a whole lot going on, just driving. I lost uh, two of my loads the last couple of days, one from a DOT medical card issue. Uh, the carrier never received my copies, and then they get them a couple hours later after making me sit the whole day. And then they wouldn't let me work. So I lost 500 miles that day. And then today, due to what I like to call act of God, the, uh, the choo-choo train didn't show up when I needed it to. So I lost out on more work today, and now I'm working late. My night driver's going to go late to his next load. And then uh, I'm going to be late for my work tomorrow. So it's a compounding issue for the last three days, and I really just want to put my fist through somebody's face. <laughs> I could volunteer a few people. Oh, I'm sure. We can start with Fish. LM and Eric Holder and the FCC and the Department of Education. And if you're not calmed down by then, I can find some more people. Oh, I'm sure. Problem is, I don't want to have to wash my hands, and I don't like getting all dirty. I'll buy you a pair of gloves. That'll work. Well, it is kind of funny how Eric Holder cancels um, these events that he's going to go to because people are threatening to protest. I think that's great. Yeah, I saw one that a friend of mine in Oklahoma posted, and he said, yeah, the Okies got outrageous, and you canceled you. And he went into a long spiel about how rotten he is. I just think it's funny. Should chase these tyrants out of our town. And I think they're start, I think the feds are starting to realize that they push us too hard and now they're going to have to quiet it down a little bit before they can push it too hard again, you know? Well, you should see there's a post on my wall. Chris called, um, Rand Paul's office and tried to do a photo. Hey, um, it's cool. Bobby, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello? I'm here. Anybody here? Yeah, we are here. Turn your sound back on. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> oh, I can hear you now. Um, can someone give me the address of the Bundy Ranch? 7175 Gold Butte Road. And that's Bunkerville, Nevada? Yeah. All right. Uh, appreciate it. Can you give me a second? I, oh, no, I can't. Yes, I can. I'll give you the zip code, too. Um, no, I'm... 8907. What did you say? Eight nine zero zero seven. All right, um, appreciate it, ma'am. Do you have something major going on combined with what I told Florida one? Um, I don't know what you told him, but um. Um, you need I, to ask him if those two things that what you're doing and what I told him mesh together or not. Okay. Copy. Thank you. I'm working on a care package right now. It's going to take me a couple more, maybe another week or so to finish it up. I will gladly climb in a box if you'll mail me there. <laughs> well, you can't make any noises. That's the problem. I don't know. I talk an awful lot, even to myself. Well, even, even AT&T can agree with that. 22,000 minutes? In 10 days. In, in 10 days. Holy shit. Did you, like, live in the conference hall? I get two hours sleep a day. Wow. I'm on my phone a lot, but you got me beat by a lot right there. My brothers and sisters needed help. I had to be here to help them. <laughs> That's why I only call in for a couple hours at a shot. AT&T really doesn't pick it up, at least uh, for me, as long as I'm not on here too much. I only have um, like six hours logged into the call, call log itself. I check my bill just to be sure. <laughs> Well, Larry Murdoch called in because I was really upset and stuff. And Larry Murdoch called in and he said that if you have AT&T, um, it's 750 minutes. Oh, yeah? Yep, a month. That's what they give you? Is that what they give you for conference? Yep. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I probably shouldn't exceed that. That's why I'm calling in now to see what's going on. But ain't a whole lot going on and I'm just driving like a jackass, as always. Nothing new. I'm not doing 70 miles an hour plus with traffic. I'm not doing it right. Well, I would suggest calling in about 9 o'clock tonight. Yeah, Mr. Bundy's coming on? Hopefully, yes. 9.30 Central, right? So that's 10.30 tonight? I would try 10 o'clock your time. Hey, well, five, that five, sucks. Because hey, I'm going to be in bed sleeping. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying I'm going to be in bed sleeping for that. Um, I need to make a call. Please hold. Well, I'm going to drop out anyway. Anything happens, you guys have my number or my contact info. Give me a heads up. 
Have a good one, sir. Well, yep, see you guys. Barbie, that's a negative on the mesh together. Thank you. Miss Barbie, are you on a mobile phone? I'm on a cell phone. <laughs> Hey guys, Larry, how you guys doing? Just fine, sir, and yourself? Oh, not too bad. I uh, got home a little bit, wanted to jump on here and see what's going on. What's the excitement? Anything? Uh, not much. <laughs> it was a bit quiet, wasn't it? Hey, does everybody have, have Rand Paul's number so that everybody can like, call and ask him why why he uh, jumped on the bandwagon or the mainstream media? Hey, I'm pissed off at Rand Paul, and um, I'm just throwing him out the window. Um, honestly, though, if you're in politics, once you say something, it don't matter how many times you say sorry, it, for me anyway, um, there's no going back from what you said to begin with, because after that point, um, what you say in politics is always going to be scripted beforehand. So yeah, buddy. Um, you had the idea. Obviously, he has more ideas on the subject, but that's all he said, because uh, you know how it works. Most of the people in here do. Um, so he can sit there and say he's sorry all he wants, but that, that means he's going to change his mind. Did he say it on a video, or did he say it on a phone conversation, or, or anything? I just what he said. I just think that he said it. <laughs> Hello? Did anybody hear what I said? Uh, I don't know when he said it or how he said it. <laughs> Florida One, was that you uh, earlier who said about uh, you threw him out the window? Who, who was I just talking to that, that said, uh, you know, threw him out the window pretty much at this point? Can you hear me? I, I can hear you a little bit. All right. Uh, yeah, that's me. I'm, I'm back. My dog. All right, it would be crashing back. Hey. My messenger Wait, is going nuts today. I'm sorry. Uh, and I forgot to turn the volume back up so I could hear everybody. Okay, now I can hear everybody. Hey, buddy. Hi. How you doing? Do you, have a link? Do you have a link for uh, where Rand Paul said that, uh, or that's on Bunny for the comments or whatever? The original comments that he had made? Yeah. Uh, Rand Paul when, was calling out Bundy for racist blah, blah, blah. Do you have a link? Because I, I haven't seen any videos or heard any video of Rand Paul, and I'd like to get that. Yo, I'm so pissed at these damn motorcycles flying by my house. That I'm going to have to get with Chris because I think he has it. Yeah, I saw the link of uh, of uh, the phone conversation between that man and uh, and uh, what is it, whoever answered the phone for Rand Paul. Hold on one second. Hello? 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 I'm telling you, between my dogs and my bird, I'm going crazy today. Um, he saw a conference where he, Rand Paul, had put Mr. Bundy down. And <coughs> if you give me a minute, I can get him on here to give you that link. Well, a suggestion to Google. What, what, would I, what would I Google to see that? Any suggestions? No clue. Rand Paul's current conversation or current post. Yeah, that are covered a whole bunch of stuff. If I'm not mistaken, I think he said it uh, through Twitter, and so you could uh, put the two of them in your search engine. Holder just canceled a, his uh, latest speech, too. Who did? Eric Holder. <laughs> Eric Holder. Eric, Eric canceled his speech or Rand Paul's speech? Uh, canceled his. 
and his speech nice. was going to be on Bundy. I'm not sure. Eric Holder, the fast, isn't he the Fast and Furious guy? Eric Holder is, uh, well, he's everything. He's all kinds of bad. But wasn't he involved in that Fast and Furious thing? I do believe so. Yes. I, I can't be for sure. Yeah, yeah. okay. Confirmation. Well, uh, yeah, on another note, uh, he also wants every single gun to have a chip in it. And he also wants every single owner to have to wear a GPS bracelet to be able yep. to own one. That's right. Well, uh, he was to, uh, give a speech at, um, uh, at a graduation ceremony in Oklahoma City for the police academy. Really? I didn't think Oklahoma would ever let him in there. They didn't. <laughs> That's why he had to cancel. <laughs> and yes, he was in, involved in the Fast and Furious and the IRS targeting of conservative groups. Right. Now, the Fast and Furious, that was under Bush's administration, right? Or was that, uh, the beginning of Obama's? Beginning of Obama's. Ah. I thought it was 2010. I'll look it up later. Shipping guns into Mexico. Yeah, that was Obama. Uh, yeah, it was 2010. Okay. I thought I was under Bush's administration. Oh, boy, well, Obama. Anyway, don't get it wrong. <laughs> hey, I can know the facts before I stop right. Bush <laughs> left office January of 2009. Oh, okay. So there's no possible West administration. Well, I blame everything on Obama if I stub my toe. I blame Obama. <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> You flip your car 12 times. Blaming thing has car 12 times. There's Obama's fault. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to use that next time. If it's a uh, thing, can you just say that his somebody else in his, uh, I don't know, Twitter tweeted that he didn't do it or something like that? Like, it didn't make a whole lot of sense, but I'm wondering if anybody can hear me. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I couldn't get Twitter to really work for me. I kept twittering myself and <laughs> trying to figure out what the hell's going on here. Why? Why? Uh, who's that British guy? The, the get gun grabber for CNN? Uh, shit, his name. Piers. M- Morgan. Morgan Piers. Morgan Piers. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was trying to Twitter him and yell at him. <laughs> and, 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 and Piers. Piers Morgan. Like, what? Piers Morgan. Okay. Yeah. And he, he's like, why are you yelling at me about this? I didn't do nothing. I'm like, I, you know, I just popped it out there that I have no idea how to Twitter, so my rants aren't working, so I gave up. No, um, Alex Jones snapped on live there on Pierce Morgan. Yeah, yeah that I was thought. the funniest. That's the funniest thing. That's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I was kind of cringing. I'm like, no, now the whole world thinks that Alex Jones is the the you know the Ted Nugent of of gun control. <laughs> this is a, this, we don't want Ted or uh, Alex Jones speaking for us like that. <laughs> he goes crazy. If I ever spoke to um, if I ever spoke to someone like that um, on that topic, I would do the same exact thing. And I know a lot of people who would as well. Um, Just don't yeah. feel like that. Uh, well, I have people I talk to people every day, and they're mostly liberals saying that. Well, I don't think anybody needs a a gun with a hundred rounds and blah blah blah, and they're completely uneducated. And so I don't I don't I don't get that uh that luxury of uh, blowing a gasket on them because I have to keep it calm so I don't lose the other people that I'm talking to. <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, that's understandable. <sighs> But I just get so pissed off whenever someone uh, just can't comprehend simple facts that come from their own damn government that prove that, I mean, they're, they're skewed to begin with. But right. then, even if well, after they're skewed, they still support ownership. I was doing a Wounded Warriors event, um, getting petitions signed and everything, and, and, and preaching about, you know, uh, gun control being bad, and, and pretty much everybody was on the same page as I was, ended up preaching for the of the choir. But then I had some uh, army guy literally walk in and said, I don't, I don't believe that you have, I don't want you to have a gun that can shoot 100 rounds. And <clears throat> I had to bite my tongue, you know, obviously, because I wanted to go off on him. So I'm like, hey, you know, that's your right. To, that's what you believe in. The, don't, don't sign the petition. But, you know, eventually you, you'll, you'll come around and you'll understand that that's just silly to even say and then like four or five marines came up next to this guy and just took him off a little ways and started saying something to him i have no idea but he left <laughs> so i was like oh heck, i didn't even have to bust the gas the guy did it for me uh, with the alex jones interview on pierce morgan he was like um he was like uh you fled here or, no, he was like you need to go back if you don't like it here so bad you need to go back where they took the guns and you're probably playing and then he was like, and I was like, as a matter of fact, Pierce, you fled here. And Pierce was like, oh, I fled here. And he's like, yeah, you did. Um, why don't you go back and face the hacking charges from the phone scandal? And why'd you get fired from putting out fake stories? And Pierce immediately, just you can see his demeanor instantly change from there. Yeah. And at the end of the interview, at the end of the interview, if you look at Pierce's face, you can tell that he is like, that he had to go home and change his pants. Right. Well, Alex Jones is crazy as far as he'll go off topic and he'll go just fucking eat shit. But he researches. He's got a team. He actually comes up with with uh, facts. You know, I, I don't like to watch him because of the, the he goes off on the rants and everything. But he's right. Yeah, he is right. Uh, that's why some people don't like him. Um, 
Um, hold on. And after that, they did a follow up on that interview, and did, and they were talking about Pierce was talking about rolling up to the boxing match that he got challenged to shooting Alex with a semi auto and um, popping him is what they said. Pop him with your semi auto and then leave. Uh, and then all the people that were on air whenever they did that all started laughing. Now, how many? T how long would it take for a pro gun person who said that on TV uh, to get over it? Right. It would still be going to this day, even if it was 10 years ago that they said it. Liberals and Democrats, they can they can say whatever they want. It's like black people can say say the N word. Uh, I'm not going to repeat the N word because I don't know who's on here and did black get offended. But they can say it all they want, and and nobody's going to care. But as soon as you know any other race gets in there, they just same thing with the pro guns and the and the uh, the anti guns. You know, anti guns say. I want to walk into a school one day and just kill a bunch of children, and everything is all, all yeah, exactly what we totally understand. And then, but if a person says something like that, it's an automatic arrest and, and, and beatings and everything else. Hi. It wouldn't be automatic arrest. It'd be automatic draw out your um, pistol, Mr. Police Officer, and shoot him on sight. Is what right. he's getting to because he was reaching in his pocket and he was just got to talking about guns or he was holding a remote control in his hand. Exactly. Or watering his lawn. Oh yeah, exactly. Like uh, most of everybody here has heard me tell the story about how this kid opens up his front door to the police. He's 17, he opens up the door, he has a weed control in his hand, which is white, by the way, for those who don't know. It doesn't look anything like a gun. And uh, the cop shoots him dead as, uh, on his own porch. <laughs> and then once his eight-year-old sister goes up to his body, he tells his sister to shut up and stop crying. And he got paid vacation, didn't lose his job or nothing. Well, all the course of duty. <clears throat> it just, oh, Were you calling me? that cops around here because I would have done the same thing to him and said that he pulled it out on me. It's very true. What's going on, Barbie? Hi, Larry. Hi. How are you today, honey? Uh, so far, so good. I just got home, jumped on here, see what's going on. Did you hear about our guest coming on tonight? No, tell me about it, please. Mr. Bundy's coming on. Oh, is he? Hopefully, yes. Well, that would be, that'd be great. Are you promoting, uh, are you sending a call or a post on yours? I'm not, but there is a post on my page. Brian did it. Okay. I'll uh, I'll share it to my page and on and on and so forth. We'll try and get a whole bunch of people on here. You and your moderator then, right? Or is Brian? I think we're both going to, but I don't know. He might just take over. I don't know. You have to ask him. I'm asking you. <laughs> uh, I would love to be the moderator in charge for it because I would not moderate any of you. <laughs> I would let everybody speak, and I usually don't have a problem letting everybody speak. Yeah, that guy could be, that would be a problem, especially for, uh, uh, Bundy's, uh, he's not used to this kind of technology. I don't think he gets off the ranch very often. No. Hey, so, yeah. I just saw a video that showed, uh, it was a police recruitment in a police academy, you know what I mean? Um, and it yeah. showed him in military type ghillie suit, uh, with snipers. That tell was, me what a police, yeah. tell me what a police officer needs a damn ghillie suit for. For all you rednecks up there in Missouri? Don't forget about it. Uh, he made a, made a pretty good point there. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I posted that on my page if you want to look at it. I do. Uh, I'll, uh, you talking about the, the Bundy's coming on tonight thing? Oh, that and the ghillie suit. <laughs> yeah, it's when you start seeing them in San Diego and LA, that's when you really wonder, like, what the hell are you doing with the ghillie suit? And how long did it take you to make it, or did you make it on your own? Well, I guarantee they did make it. They probably bought it off eBay. Right? Um, Classic. Like all these Call of Duty pros. Um, anyway. Hey, Larry. Yes, buddy. Okay, I got the perfect thing. I thought about this for you to get for your wife. Okay. Okay, when you go down the coast highway, okay, from L.A. going south. Right. And you go past that um, biker hangout that's up on the hill. Yep. I forgot the name of it. The fish Fisherman's Net, is that it? Yeah. They call it the net. Yeah, you go past that, and you go towards the next town. Um, on the left-hand side of the road, there's a big succulent farm. Oh, Encinitas? Um, I'm not sure. It's there. Yeah, that's Encinitas. That's, in Encinitas. that's the next town over. It's going towards there, yeah. It's almost at the town, but they have some yeah. awesome pots in there. You should go in and check them out. Maybe I will. Thank you. I brought one home from home to Arkansas with me. Really? Yep. Yeah, it's just out there at the end of February. Oh, wow. You have family out here? My son's stationed at Fort Wainimi. Oh, sweet. I was there for two weeks. I could never... You could never... I could never live there. Why is that? Um, because the highways are very scary, and the side streets are even worse. Yes, traffic sucks out here. Yes. 
People don't know how to drive. And they have speed limits of like 55 miles an hour between a one block red light. Yeah. And the light turns green and it's like, let's see who can get the 55 first. Exactly. We're all in a hurry. <sighs> oh, hold on. Good job, Barbie. How's that? Probably some NSA troll getting paid uh, $85 an hour to go around and fuck with people's phone calls who don't like them. Yeah, I gotta get a job like that. I gotta fuck with the libs all the time. But I mean, you, you got like Edward Snow. He had a two thousand, two hundred thousand a year, uh, two hundred thousand dollars a year job, and um, he had a beautiful wife. He had a good life going for him. Um, but instead, he chooses to get hunted down by the U.S. government for the rest of his life until he gets killed by him, um, and it just gets hushed over and hide out in whatever countries he can. Just like, and he's holed up. He's gonna end up getting holed up in airport, just like Julian Assange for twenty years if he does. So basically, he created his own problem um, because I mean the government is not scared of those people because they don't have any country that they can live in. They have to live in a cell or they end up getting killed. So they're not worried about those people. Oh, oh never mind. Yep, did you? Uh, Florida one. Okay. Sorry about my phone sounds, guys. Oh, is that you? Yes, it was my cell phone. <laughs> See, you didn't have to hear that before because I was on my phone. Now that I can't be on my phone, you get to hear all my funny phone sounds. Oh, nice. You know what I just remembered just now? Um, back whenever they were teaching me about George Washington, and they focused more on the quality of his teeth than what he actually did. Right? That's I because just, he had what know. Actually, they didn't say even a word about what they did, what he did at all. They just mainly just said, um, Cherry down tree. top his, uh, oral, um, oral situation there. Uh, so that just goes to show, um, what in the hell? I mean, what teacher that is pitted me on? I've never even thought about that before. La, 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 la. You do know he had wooden teeth. He was the first man to ever have wooden teeth. Isn't that yeah, cool? They made it out of uh, ivory. Yep. He was also, more importantly, he was also the first president of the United States under the Constitution, which is the yep. which is one of the greatest achievements uh, that anyone can have. And he chopped down a cherry tree and didn't lie about it. <laughs> I wouldn't chop down a cherry tree. I like cherries. I didn't know it was a tree. I always thought cherries were a bush, but okay. Nope, they're a tree. I have one in my yard. Along with peach trees and apple trees and plum trees and persimmons trees. Dear, dear and love persimmons. I never knew what they were before. I've never seen them before I moved here. And okay. uh, try eating one. Well, I did, and guess what? I ate one that wasn't quite ripe. No, they they all taste like that. Trust no, me. No, don't. Once they're ripe, they're yummy. Wild cherry? No, persimmons. Oh. Deer just love to eat them up. Well, guys, I gotta go run off and get a haircut. I gotta do a little go tomorrow, so I will talk to you later. Okie dokie. Have a good one, sir. See you later, Larry. Hey, Larry. Hope I missed him. We were just asking. Oh my god, I heard it echo. I keep on hearing my phone tapping coming through the line. And then I hit the mute button and forget to unhit it, and I sit here and talk to you while it's muted. <laughs> Don't you just love whenever somebody uh, says, Oh, I got a Glock 40. I got a Glock 40, man. I have to bullets for it. Well, a Glock 40 doesn't even exist. Well, it's a Glock 23, I think. This is a 40 now. Hey, you know what? I got a, uh, uh, damn, what do I got? Never mind, my mind went blank. Uh, you have a, you have a Glock? No, I don't have a Glock. I don't like them. They're too fat. You like 1911? Nope. Isn't that, more, uh, isn't that more of a um, shotgun type gun, a long gun? No, the 1911s are, um, is a 45 uh, pistol design that was nope. made in 1911. So that design's over 100 years years old. I it, think it, it had over 60 years in service with the U.S. military. I wouldn't be surprised if they were using clocks now. 
Well, y'all, it's been a real pleasure chatting with y'all, and I'll be back later on tonight. Y'all right. have a nice day. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Now, Comson, if you put a Glock in my hand, it feels like I can't hold on to it because it's too fat. It's too wide at the back. I have little oh, yeah. hands. I'm going to have to take this. Maybe you'd like the um, 41 or 42 and 38 special that they just came out with recently. Well, I have a, I have a 38. And it's like my favorite gun. They are a lot easier to conceal. Yep. It fits right in my hand. I have a custom made grip on mine for my hand. So. And handguns. For handguns, I like um, shoot nine millimeter. But nope. a lot of people say, "Oh, I want a, I want a forty five. I want something that's gonna knock something down." Well, I, I don't know, but I can hit a lot more accurately with a nine millimeter than I can with a forty five. I can take a raisin off the tip of your nose with my thirty eight, and that's all I need. I'm not trying to be derogatory, but uh, I'm not sure I'd let anyone do that. <laughs> well, I can do it. I want to go deer hunting with a forty four magnum. Okay. Why? I went deer hunting with my thirty eight one year. What? Yeah. What were you trying to do? Empty a whole magazine? They don't have or hit a get a head over. <laughs> and no, I took a deer out with one shot. You hit it in the head. Yep. No, I mean I wanna get uh, one of those uh forty fours, get a scope on it, um and you know, try and get at least a fifty yard plus shot on one. I used to say I did it uh I think it'd be a good idea uh, that if you were in like a tree stand to carry like a, a nine millimeter or something up with you in case it got below your stand. Well, the thing about it is, if you're gonna go out hunt one, make sure you take some rope with you so you can gut it, hang it up, skin it, you know. Oh, I know how. I don't. I just drag it back to the house with a four wheeler, put it in the bed of the truck, oh. and then um, yeah, I'll I gotta rip first, that. then I drag it back. Oh yeah, you do it all in the woods. Well, that sometimes that spoils it for if anyone else wants to hunt because then the deer don't like uh, smelling their comrade on the ground like that. But if you're only doing it once a year, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I don't even have to do it that often because other people will hit them or or get them and just bring them by the house and I don't know what to do with this. Well, I'll take care of it. Dude, once those dry counties down in Arkansas got wet again, dude, there's so many liquor shops popped up down there since the last time I was down there. I'm still in a dry county. I don't know why they'd make it a dry county. I don't care. I make no well, it's unconstitutional. That is unconstitutional to make a dry county. I'm pretty sure. I think it's the 23rd Amendment. Also, it took Congress 200 years to pass the 27th, which affected their pay, not allowing them to get a pay raise until the next term. I wonder why it took them 200 years. Hey, guess what, Pumplon? What's up? My husband just came home, and he brought me headphones and a microphone that I can plug in to my iPad. Sounds great. I don't have to hear it all. So he doesn't have to hear it all. <laughs> Let's see if I can figure out how to get them open. Oh, I'll hit mute. Testing, testing. Can you hear me? Well, I'm clear. Do I sound better than what I did? Uh, it's about the same. Well, sing to me so I can hear you. Uh, I'm good on that. <laughs> might uh might cause some trauma for a few people. Yes, they're working. But we're gonna have to figure out how to make him go this way, so I can talk loud enough for Comms One to hear me. Uh, I've got my speakers up. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, my mute button still works too, so that's cool. Uh, well, usually with headphones that have the microphone on the headphones, um, the mute button doesn't work on the cell phones. But I'm not on a cell phone. I'm on Skype. Oh, you are? Oh, yes. I can't dial in the number. It's um, It says oh, this number is inaccessible that. to my phone. Oh, you paid the credit? Uh, no, I got that. Um, Please announce yourself. Please announce yourself. Yeah, I got I the nine ninety nine dollars 99 Is that Brian? Yes, that is I. It looks like we uh, have two moderators on this call taking care of business. I'm going to have to skip out for about a half an hour in a little while, but I'm in for the next wow. hour. 
Barbie is experimenting with new headphones. Excellent, excellent. The reason why you can hear me a lot better is because I'm not even on my phone. I'm calling in uh, online right now with Skype. No, I'm using. I'm not. I, I didn't even. Have, I didn't even use my code. Um, it automatically enters the regular access code, and plus I wouldn't enter anyway online uh, because um, because now I can notice whenever I call someone on my cell phone that it's just a drastic difference in who can hear me. Wow, is that Kong's one? Yes, it is. Yes, Kong's it is. One, his voice sounds so different right now. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow, yeah. Wow, yeah. Awesome. Good for you, man. Yeah, kind of cool. We're still working on seeing if we can get uh, a little piece of something for our phone, though. Working on it. But as of right now, you're into your PC, I'm assuming? Yeah, it's on um, a site called Zingaya.com. Yeah, I got a free trial, but I can keep on making up dummy emails to get uh, two week free trials on all of them. So you're... Definitely coming in through your PC, dialing in from a third party, like long distance dialer, you can hear? Oh, I don't know what the number is. I've been wanting to know what number I'm calling off of. I can tell you. Go ahead and tell me. H E double hockey sticks. Well, I know that. I typed that in. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your caller ID, you can set it? Yeah, I, no, it's in the URL of the thing. Minnesota set it up, and he sent me the link for it, and at the top of it, it said from, um, it said from Minnesota, so I was like, hmm. So I erased that and just typed in, typed that in. Hey, Minnesota, thank you, man. I don't know if he's on here still. I think he's still eating his pancakes. <laughs> so what are we going to do tonight, Brian? Uh, this, that, and the other. I expect a, a good variety of people to start flowing in here somewhere around, uh, 9 Central, so 2 hours. Um, until then, I guess, uh, we get, get more updates on, the uh, Bunny Ranch and, uh, you know, we, I know we hey. had other conversations going on. I'm sure you've got a handful of updates. What's up, Tom? Hey, is there any live feed going on from the ranch tonight? Um, Kelso will chime in with that. He should be doing this. Like, um, we haven't heard from him all week. Yeah, I've been talking to him. He's just been busy. Um, so yeah. Well, uh, he should Brian, be, um, go ahead. Never mind. I'm going to just put, type it in on the hush now. Florida One back. Welcome back, Florida One. Me and Florida One, been doing, me and Florida One um, found a little anomaly with the BLM on their technological side. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> Excellent. That's all you had to say. Um, obviously, not too much you'd want to say out loud about that. Obviously. Well, it's, well I'm working on it now. I mean, it's not. Uh, it has a lot of potential to, to say that much. Um, it has to do with files um, going through... Being able to receive and upload files, so I mean you can draw conclusions from that. Yeah. But definitely wouldn't want to look at this uh, without having a secure connection, as the disclaimer would uh, indicate. I'll read it real quick. Are you about to read the disclaimer? It basically, just says. Um, hold on. I'm trying to scroll up. It says, this is a notice of monitoring of the Department of the Interior DOI information systems. This computer system, including all related equipment networks and network devices, including Internet access, is provided by the DOI in accordance with agency policy for official use and limited personal use. All agency computer systems may be monitored for all lawful purposes, including but not limited to ensuring that use is authorized for management of the system to facilitate protection against unauthorized access and to verify security procedures, survivability, and operational security. Any information on this computer system may be examined, recorded, copied, and used for authorized purposes at any time. All information, including personal information placed or sent over the system, may be monitored or users of the system are reminded that such monitor monitoring does occur. Therefore, there should be no expectation of privacy with respect to the use of this system. Um, by logging into this, is by the way, you have to have a BLM contact to log in. Evidence of your use Authorized or unauthorized collected during monitoring may be used for civil, criminal, administrative, and other adverse action. Unauthorized and legal use may be subject to your prosecution. And there's another couple ones that basically explain what it is. It says, in order to share files with the BLM, you must have a BLM employee with whom you wish to share and submit a request on your behalf. Once you've received your credentials, you'll be able to upload the files via um, BLM application secure system located at a specific URL. Your credentials are, will remain in effect for 7 to 540 days, depending on the original share folder set up by your BLM partner. Um, and then it basically says you have to use Internet Explorer, which proves how secure, or it proves how much they know about computers. In my investigation, the secure part of that acronym should be taken out as of now, anyway. That was a muscle, man. Just do what you got to do. 
for the void. What, uh, Bart, did you have anything you wanted to say specific on? I know you had a lot of questions lined up. I didn't want to <coughs> include the man too much. Um, you mean now or for later? Well, well, later when he comes up. I have a few things down, yeah. Uh, we had an interesting call to Rand Paul's office. The video's posted on my wall if you want to check it out. You said call to his office? Yep. Did you make that call? No, I did not. <laughs> but one of our callers did. And that was Rand Paul's office? Yes, sir. Was it good or bad? It was cute. I liked it. I told him he did an awesome job. Fair enough. I'll get a chance uh, in a little bit. Have some. If anybody wants to help uh, continue to reshare that last post, uh, if you're online right now through community conference calls, for the one that's coming up tonight, trying to get Clive and Bundy on the right on the phone, that'd be useful. Uh, Barbie, as far as you know, still is 100% set. He'll be on that phone call, right? Yep. Please. So far, all the intel that we have, it, nothing looks like it's going to happen to stop it. Fair enough. There's only one thing I ain't been able to figure out yet, but... I don't think that's going to stop it tonight. Well, hopefully he's still happy with what we're doing. I think so. Yeah, that'd be great to hear from him directly. That'd be a, a good Friday night call. People want to relax and get the latest scoop, et cetera. It would be nice to see. Did you get a chance to uh, talk to him directly? Nope. Although he was standing right beside the people that were on the conference call. Nice. Good, good, good. good, good, good. So hopefully so far so good. That would be nice to hear from him that we, he thought we did a good job thus far. I, uh, I told, you know, some people, that, you know, get to help out, you know, directly and financially if they can, but I definitely told people not to put themselves out of pocket a few times, you know. Um, I mean, as far as, you know, if you're starving, you still got to feed your kids. Yes, it's great to give what you can, but, you know, not to hurt yourself. Hopefully he didn't take that into conjecture as people have been taking into conjecture his, uh, non-racist, uh, recent remarks. If you've been watching those all over the flipping place recently, uh, the side video behind it showing all of what he said and then showing how the leftist media like to uh, portray individuals in these situations as uh, gracious, not cool. Yeah, we knew that card was going to get played. It's unreal. I didn't expect that really to uh, be so prevalent in the last 48 hours. It's been posted about that footage. Come on, man. Next page. You really didn't expect that? I'd like to say I didn't. Uh, no, they, they're grasping at straws. I mean, they, they had helicopters take off from Vegas, and before the first five were fully in the air, we knew it was a, it, what was going on, you know? We confirmed mm -hmm. how many were going out. We had exactly where they were going and where they were staying at. No, they, they had to come up with something good, and this was the only thing they could grasp at. Well, there's a bunch of people on the top. Anybody wants to speak up? Uh, there's, what, nine people? Got a bunch of anonymous in there. Gotta love those guys with the call blockers. 5146, anything you wanted to chime in with? I think you needed. Actually, most of the anonymouses are Skype calls now. Hmm. Anybody on Skype want to chime up? Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of anonymous callers in there. That's a nice bunch of like, anonymous caller. That was me. Oh, that was you. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's so many now. I expect that to get worse. Um, I think at the beginning of uh, the 8 o'clock hour, we should probably mention another way to get in here. Um, again, I hope to help those uh, able to come up with that capability again so we can direct people towards him. And um, there's a couple other the other media groups that I uh, attached a couple messages to. Hopefully, they'll pick it up as well. Nothing confirmed yet. Man, that's a lot of hours. My son's over here rubbing my headphones saying, ooh, they feel nice. Okay. You know what that means, right? No. That means they're going to get stolen. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yes, we got Brian's here. We have Sorry, an awesome conversation. I'm, uh, I'm looking at the, uh, the data that we got on these calls. I got to get yourself with some recording sometimes to so loosen stuff down. <laughs> All right, if they want to be muted down, so we still got a couple hours for this to see. I wish you. Or have you had a chance to download any of the uh, past calls? No. Was I supposed to? No, you weren't supposed to, but if you'd like to, it's, it's, you'll have the hard copy with us. Oh. You go to the uh, conference history and recordings, check with recordings only, and use the dates from the first book today. Okay. You, just, you, know, you pull them all down there, play with Uh, Chris from Washington, can you unmute and talk for a minute? How's it going? Uh, it's going pretty good. Hey, Brian's here, and I know you haven't gotten a chance to talk to him yet. You want to tell him about your phone call today? Which, uh, which phone call? The one you posted on my wall. Uh oh. Which one? Is that you called, uh, you called, uh, Rand Paul's office today? Did I call who? Did you call Rand Paul's office today? I didn't call anybody's office today. Oh, okay. okay. Wrong person. Yeah, not me. It's the other Chris. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember how I told everybody that I wanted everyone that comes out with something bad to say, we need to call him and record the conversation? Yes, I remember you saying that. Well, the other Chris, let's see, what is he? 
Minnesota 7? No, Missouri 7. He called and did an interview and recorded it. It's pretty good. Uh, you should look at it. It's on my wall. Okay, I will. <laughs> I've been kind of, you know, I was kind of bummed out this morning. So I just kind of took a break after yesterday. I mean, I was I'm glad to see things are starting to turn around today. You finally got somebody talk, helping him with talking. Is that what I'm seeing? Um, He's supposed to be coming in. We're hoping he's coming. We've got plans for him to come. I just posted. <laughs> I shared the post. So. Uh. That, that, uh, he, he comes. We'll see. Yeah, a few of the people around him that we have been in touch with did get him on the on the line, and we're standing next to him. We got him on a call for a minute, from what I've been told, and then uh, he made a promise to get on here tonight. So the people that are around him will still be around him, you know, nearby. We'll be able to call them to have to remind him. Hopefully, uh, Barbie's got that as a backup plan. Well, that's what I have as a backup plan. We got to make sure Jag has that as a backup plan. Okay. Has anything anything happened today? I haven't really. I just kind of followed a few things. Nothing really. <laughs> Nothing really. We haven't had any call-ins. Now I was gone most of the morning, but nobody relayed any information that was pertinent. So. Yeah, yeah I just read, you know, that he was coming on. I figured I'd come in and say that's pretty cool stuff. And I don't know if I'll be able to be on the call, but that'll be right during dinner time for us. But I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> Get your headphones out. Stick one yeah. earbud in one ear and yes, dear, yes, dear, out of the other. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I bring the phone to the table, she will come. <laughs> I look at her with pup. Oh, go to the store now and grab some flowers and say, I love you, darling. I just want to listen on this call. You have my undivided attention. Yeah, I'm glad to see that other people are starting to come out and talk out for him, too. You know, saying, come on, this is, this is you know. I, I, don't understand, I don't understand how people can take that as racism when you listen to the whole, all the content. Right. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. But they like playing those cards, man. It's just how it kind of works in the, in the media right now. They just can't stop trying to play with that card. They want more people's, you know, uh, opinion and see who speaks out. You know, they want to know who the racists are and who the racists aren't, even the one that says that they aren't. You know, some still are. So catch up with what they say later. It's all entertaining. Yeah. Uh, I knew that they were going to have a problem as soon as they... I, I, just, I was surprised by... I mean, I, I knew that with, I knew that MSNBC would start screaming racism, but I was pretty blown away when I found out Fox News was going to do it, too. I mean... I mean, it took less than eight hours for them to turn on so much yeah. money else. Well, actually, if Fox wants to stay in business, they'll do what they're told. It's that simple. I know Fox is corrupt as hell to begin with. I mean, they're better than the others. Don't get me wrong. But I, every single time I see someone watching Fox, I don't trust a word they say. Yeah, it, it's sad, you know. When I was younger, you know, before pre, pre-2008, I wa- grew up watching MSNBC. And then all of a sudden, they just, like, out of nowhere, just, like, took a left turn, and so I switched down boxes, switched over them, and now they're just, I mean, they're just as bad as, you know, they're all controlled. Dude, holy shit. It's, uh, the Pentagon, I'm just reading an article, it said the Pentagon says that uh, Russian jets entered Ukraine airspace. I know it's off topic, but... Uh, oh, no, that, you know, it all ties, into, all ties in together. If you guys pay attention to what's going on around the world, people are, are, are revolting everywhere. And you can't go through the news without seeing governments out there abusing their people somehow. So this, you know, us being unhappy in this country, we're, we're not the only nation in the country, you know, in the world that is not happy with their government right now. Well, I, the revolution in Ukraine, I think, um, was not, was fun, had a lot of money pumped into it. It had a lot of different countries. Um, hey, Chris. Um, yeah. Since Tom Flynn and me and Brian are the ones talking to you, would you mind if we did a little experiment with you? Oh, so I, sure. Cool. Brian? Brian? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still here. I'm not really still in my experimenting phase, but I'll try mm-hmm. anything twice. <laughs> this is actually one you didn't show me. A um, couple days ago, a week ago, you were you had got everybody that was on the call so that they couldn't hear anything, and you could talk individually to somebody. How did you do that? Did you Is that what the hold button's for? Um, hmm. I believe that may have been what I did. Hang on one second. Isn't that Q&A? No. No, Q&A, that was pretty good. All right, since uh, hey, out of the 10 people that are on this call right now, let's see how that works. Barbie, you are unplugged. If I could unhold you. Okay, you put me on hold. Not, it, says you're on, it says it's all on hold, so I'm just trying to see what this feature does. It's only if you're still on hold. Though. Did it just mute you out? Can anybody else speak right now? Okay. I couldn't hear you because you hit my hold, too. Can anybody else hear us? So I just uh, undid that. Um, now, there is okay. another option. If you look up. On the right, where we have a list of all the names of who's in the room, you'll see caller name, call began, duration, roll, hold, mute. Hello. In those columns. 
Yeah, Barb. Hey, yeah, man, that's a no go. Okay. You can mute anybody out manually if you ever wanted to do it inside the entire call, like when you're in this mode. Hello? Hello? Hi. <laughs> can you hear now, Chris? It's like really low. Hmm. Everything's loud and clear on my end. I don't know what's going on on your end there, Chris. Um, might be your headset. Hey guys, still there? We can hear you, but your phone sounds like garbage. Let me try calling back. Fair enough. Oh, we'll be right here. A lot of crackle going on on his end. Um, hey, Brian. Yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead. I want to try to do the call tonight without putting it in Q&A, depending on how many people are here. I mean, if we get swamped, go ahead. But I'd like to try to do it without. That's my one request. Um, right. We also have to watch for his number. Um, so I get what you're saying, but that's going to be pretty hard to probably do as unorganized as this gets. Uh, once you get past 100 callers, it gets pretty crazy. It's a out of tune. Um, a lot of people talking over each other. So I'm most likely I'll do that as long as I can until it gets rowdy. Then I'll have to push everybody into tune. I'll handle this wood forward pretty much at, uh, at 8 o'clock now. I don't mind. If, of course, you know, I step away or whatever, you want to, you want to meet somebody out in particular. Hey, uh, you know, one, two, four, two. We heard, we heard you come back in the queue, man. Um, you having phone issues over there? Barb, well, do I seem to be coming in uh, loud and clear on my end? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Chris in Washington, I, I, you back? I put head, yeah, I put headphones on so I can hear better now. I have to steal them. I have to steal them. Yeah, and go ahead and get to work on this deal. So I'll call back in here in a little bit. Ten four, bro. So do you guys have like a list? Are you guys going to let people actually ask him a bunch of questions if he calls, or you guys have some questions ready right for him? Um, we're going to ask him a handful just to get the easy ones out of the way, and then probably ask a couple quick more ones, and I'll open it up uh, for question and answer. I'll, I'll just reset the thing um, for Q&A, and then, uh, you know, I, there's, instead of, you know, the ranting and stuff, we're going to try to curb that. There's going to be people that get on, but I want to make sure if they don't have a legitimate question, I'm going to be a little bit... Uh, I wouldn't be domineering with him around. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to not do. You know what I mean? I yeah. want to have people asking the question, but if they go like on a tangent or they go, you know, out of pocket, I'm going to have to cut up to the next guy without, you know, and I'll be as grateful as possible. I hear you. But I want to give him a chance to speak as long as he'll be on and let people uh, try to answer those questions. You know, I don't want to wear the man down, though, either. A lot of time to get off, off his chest, what he needs to say. Well, what we can do is we can run some PSAs and tell everybody we're going to give him a five-minute time limit. And if there is extra time, we'll let you ask second questions and third questions. Hey, you know, I, I, since, you know, you are moderating this phone call, that means that you get to moderate, you know, moderate it any way you want. So, you know, right. things, things that are irrelevant, I mean, completely, you know, don't, you know, don't be afraid to interrupt anybody. And say, you know, I'm not. Where, you know, this isn't where we need to go. You know, this is, this is right. why we're here. Right. Right. And after he leaves, you know, we'll still keep up that conversation as long as we can until, you know, other things, we're allowed to say what we want to, you know, if we can. So if other people later want to bring up stuff, that's fine. But right, right when he gets out, we're definitely going to keep it Bundy related without trying to get evaded too much. Obviously other things, federal blah, 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 and BLM this and, uh, you know, encroachment that and rights, you know, and constitution that's going to come up. So we'll, we'll do our best, man. We've been doing pretty good so far, especially when it's busy. So, um, are you, you guys going to? Are you going to ask them if there is any legal proceedings to remove people? We can ask, but uh, when it comes to those I, things, you know, but you know, when it comes to those things, those are things you don't really want out in the air. Um, you know, another gentleman got brought up that's in a recent court case about something else, and we didn't we didn't realize that right away. But when we did, we had to change the conversation because you can't really, you know, you don't want to intrude on anybody's. Uh, yeah, I heard that there's litigation pending. Yeah. Um, um Brian, another yes, thing, when he comes on, since you're in charge, uh. Make sure you mention that you're sorry to hear about Brave. You did hear about Brave, didn't you? No. I read about Brave. Brian, Brian, Brian. Brave was one of the baby cats oh. that he was helping. Wait, wait, I, think I, definitely, I, I, wanna, I wanna say that I think this definitely needs to be one of the questions that is asked for tonight is what are their, Harry Reid has got two more years in the head in the Senate. What are they doing to try to get him out of there now? I think that's a very fair question. You know, what are they doing to stop their congressmen from threatening them with the federal government? I mean, Chris, like I said, yes, yeah. <laughs> Let me fill Brian in because he doesn't get to watch the news. He has a nine survivor. Brian, one of the yep. babies, one of the babies was named Brave. She was born when the cows first came home and they had to put them in the paddock so that they didn't, the BLM didn't take them again. And the mother gave birth and Brave plopped out on the outside of the fence. And because of the mama being sick, Brave had a lot of complications. And they've been nursing Brave and there's pictures of him carrying Brave around 
and he really liked Brave. And Brave passed away this morning. Oh. Yeah. Got it. Appreciate the info. Sorry to hear that. Remember, he, he's a, what, 68, 70-year-old rancher. Those things are right. important to him. Yeah, absolutely. They're very uh, kind people from what I've seen. Good people. That remind me of my uh, uncle's book. He had told you anything that you wanted to throw in in addition that you felt should be it? Um, not really. Not Everything else should be okay. I just think we should make sure to mention that. The fact that, you know, we're here for him and we're here for every patriot out there on the ground, be it an Oath Keeper, a um, militia man, everyone who's there and everybody who's supporting him, we're here too. Right. Anything else you think we should time it on this? No, I think you can handle the rest, I think. Um, the rest of what I have is logistical. I I don't want, well, yeah, there's one other thing. I don't want anybody asking the numbers. Yeah, they might have intel and have planes flying over and drones flying over to see how many people are there, but I don't think we should ask it so that it should be put out. Like how many people are there kind of thing? Yeah, because that puts our guys in, in, that puts their lives in jeopardy. Yeah. Maybe a thank you for the rumors and clarification hotline number. Um, you know about the rumors and hotline number, right? Yes, 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 yes. And the volunteer hotline number? Right. I, I, I cannot use that at all. Uh, I haven't either, but I have given it out a lot. Oh, and for your information, not perfect tonight, but for your information, mm -hmm. a representative, Dan Dwyer, called back in again, and we told him that they still need about 50 men on the ground. So he's going to try and handle that from uh, Maryland. Yeah, I'm sure other groups are still trying to send people out there. Yeah, we told him we needed medical personnel, and they were there the next day. Yep. Yeah, there's definitely others that still said they were headed there. Some might not have time back in, but uh, we can actually talk to those guys prior to or before or even after um, five in coming up. Um, we can try. We had three call-ins last night, so I don't know how many we'll get tonight. Yeah, Probably yeah, Texas there's, comms there's, one's going to call in at some point. Yeah, the, the invites are out for sure. More people I expect to come tonight. Um, a lot of people are chiming in on Facebook, so we put plenty of other people to reshare that as well. Based on the same excitement that we had, you know, obviously we'll have him and others on the call. But yeah, um, wanted to ask the number you gave me, other uh, the other for so the JAG officer. Um, I did leave her a message, but I didn't get a chance to talk to her directly yet. I know you left her a message. She texted me. <laughs> Okay. I was in the doctor's office and I got a message from her. Do you know Brian's calling me? <laughs> I told her to call okay. you back. And she said okay. she was going to. I don't know why she didn't. Uh, the sooner the better, yeah. Especially if you can verify that obviously we're trying to make sure we get a hold of not only Clive, but uh, a couple of the guys that are there in the inner circle again. Probably just to help wrap up the call. Um, there was something else. I was just... When I do public service announcements... I'm going to also remind people after last night that we need to keep an eye on the language because this man has very strong, firm beliefs, and we don't need to, to be rude. I will mention that early and repeatedly. Yeah, let me let me give you a heads up. It's like this. It's 6.33 p.m. Central Standard Time. You are on an open, unmoderated conference call. Tonight, we will have a special guest calling in. Please, everybody, remember, keep your language clean. We will really appreciate that. Treat everybody with the same respect you wish to be treated with. And when you're answering que asking questions of this caller, please keep it to a five-minute limit. That way, everybody gets to at least say hi and ask a question. Thank you for your time, guys, and let's go. Um, if you could actually slide that to three to five minutes, I want to move it fast but not root. Um, okay. we'll you know, a chance to ask her questions, and uh, I'm actually going to attempt to run the stopwatch. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Attempt to run a stopwatch. Yeah, on top of everything else, it'll be on my phone, so we'll see how that works out. But I think I can make this happen. Five minutes is an awful long time for one person for questions. That should be great. Well, that's also a long time when you're the seventh guy in hold, and your phone's got minutes and you're running out of time. So if we can knock it down to three to five, that way... They're asking if they have their little conversation. Hopefully, it doesn't uh, bother Cloud too much. But uh, you know, it, it depends. Basically, if there's four people in the queue, they can hold. If there's 20 people in the queue, I'm gonna have to move faster. So, kind of play it by ear and see what happens, eh? Yeah, that's pretty much uh, the pace we've been keeping it when uh, when I'm on here anyway. And Barb, you've been a blessing. Hey, uh, you know, I, there's a talk show in here that I, I listen to every morning on the on the way to work. Um, I won't mention what it is, but it's a rock and roll station out here that covers part of the Midwest. Um. I really like how they kind of function things. And Barb, what you just did when you said that, um, you want to try to make that happen on the hour, maybe, or on the half hour, even, just so as we, we get the... as we get closer to the time, I'll do it every fifteen minutes. 
because that's what we yeah, were doing, yeah. waiting for you to come online, but you didn't come and hear us say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but again, the weekends I'm going to be able to devote more time to, um, you know, depending on the weekend. Uh, and then during the week, again, I just kind of chime in when I can. I know people want to use this as a show, and it's been a calm line for the bunnies on the side, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll be here when I can. It's kind of a schedule I've got right now, but uh definitely wanted to take part in this, and I've got some time tonight. So we'll both be running the show today, Barb. Cool, I get to co-host with you. Yeah, it'll be fun. And, uh, you know, you've been writing a lot of stuff down, and you've got actually more data probably than I do right now written down outside of the, you know, first week. Um, I'm on my fourth know, that, notebook. Yeah, but so from that point, obviously, uh, when those questions arise, feel free to sign in. You've got the moderator dashboard, so do as you do so well. I don't know. We're going to have to come up with a routine so we can play off of each other better. We're too agreeable. Yeah, I kind of hear it. Well, it would be cool. Like, you even have, uh, you know, comes one time and every so often with a new technical update that he's got on his end. Luckily, it's died down there, so the whole, you know, the radio thing's died down a lot. But it was kind of nice to have him in the foreground listening to, you know, police communications nearby just to make sure everything's on the up and up when, when they were running plates and such. I don't know. He comes one. So did you come back here, please? No, he's not back. Not looking at people. I'm looking. But, yeah. But, yeah, when he, uh, it's, it's nice just to have him on when it's busy here. That way we can literally, we were verifying stuff on the spot. And then, but yeah, I've got a couple notes from there. Definitely, you know, the basic questions I wanted to get through with him. What, what do they need to do, yada, yada, without saying too much? And let him give his version. And obviously, he's going to have enough to say to, to, to take up some time. And then, obviously, when it's time to go, we can keep going up with what he just said and update people that came in late. And, you know, you can keep uh, sticking to that subject. More people want events. But, uh, you know, we can throw in a couple of, couple of recent things in news, I'm sure. You mean you I have to go brush up on the news? Right. Have you ever no. heard of the, uh, the NATO 3? No. Never heard of the NATO 3? Have you ever heard of Banksters? Yeah. Vanderbeek? David? Um, apparently he's the governor of Nevada. Okay. I was getting messages today. I need to figure out how to tie the two of them together. <laughs> Interesting enough, I'm sure there's some association. A lot of things got to get past the governor. And a lot of things that just happened obviously got past the governor. So. Mm-hmm. It'd be nice to hear more from him. But yeah, the, uh, I mentioned earlier the NATO 3 was, uh, booked by the Chicago, uh, police department quite a while back. Um, after they had the NATO summit out here, they were supposedly, uh, causing domestic terrorists. They were planning something. Supposedly, uh, an undercover police officer infiltrated their group in May of 2012, but, uh, they plotted to set fire to some buildings using Molotov cocktails out here during that NATO summit. Um, we worked pretty hard to make sure that all the guys in the group knew if you were to be down there to not go as a son, um, and definitely, you know, don't cause any trouble or anything like that. We don't know who these guys are, thank God, but um, we were really worried about some, you know, riot type activity down there. That's why we just kind of wanted to dissolve our hands of it and make sure that we were not on, even in that side of the city, so to speak, um, while that was happening. But, yeah, some locals actually just finally got their uh, prosecution, and they were sentenced um, officially, and I believe that was today. But, uh, it's, it's kind of sad. I was reading some of the reports. It's, uh, you know, I don't know these guys from Adam. They look like they could be hotheads. I don't, can't really tell. But, uh, yeah, they, they, they don't take those kind of things lightly. I'm just kind of curious how that all actually did go down. Um, you know, who they're calling out as domestic terrorists at this point in time. And, you know, if these guys were really even plotting anything or, you know, were they just, uh, you know, goofing over the phones? Were they goofing by Facebook? Who knows? But they definitely, uh, um, just kind of, kind of sad how that turned out. Now, if they were plotting something, all right, so be it. You know, they got what they deserve. But just curious, been kind of watching the local domestic terrorist cases and these guys just got sentenced today. Um, none of the names do I ring a bell in our roster, thank God. But you never know, man. We're kind of compiled of all kinds of people, so just making sure that they steer definitely clear of anything with the word militia in it in the uh, in the media. Just kind of watching for that, but they kept them separate. Luckily, at least on the stuff I've been reading. You know, RT. Are you guys familiar with RT at all? How do you feel about them? RT for me is Rolling Thunder, and I know you're not talking about them. No, no, no. Uh, RT is actually the real name for Russia today, but uh, they put out a lot of videos, um, a lot of exposés. They work closely with Gary Franci, too, sometimes, who's also a media guy from Chicago. But uh, I don't know, I, I've always kind of liked what RT is doing. Good and bad, good and bad. Some people freak out just because it's got the word Russia today in the name of their group, so it's obviously pro pro or pro tell pro or that, um, whatever. But uh, I, don't know, I still like some of the articles. They usually are pretty fair as far as uh, underground slash media. They're on the air, actually, right now. So, um, our DAG officer friend, uh, you're able to communicate with her directly via text? Yeah. Um, can you give her a quick message? Maybe see if she's able to, uh... She's still at work, I think. Uh, Wait a minute. All right, hey, Barb, i got to come out um, for about 15, 20 minutes, so I'll be back. Okay. And, uh, may the force be with you. <laughs> Not a problem. Ding. 
Anybody still on here? Okay, sending me messages saying you're still on doesn't count. Come on, speak up. I was listening to your interview, the interview is from Ron Paul's office. It kind of drops off there at the end of this, some of the phone calls, but definitely interesting. Yeah, I think everybody should be making phone calls like that. I really do. Anybody know what that date is for Operation American Spring? Is that where they're going to go to the mall in Washington? Yeah. I know. It's just in May. <laughs> Well, I know, that's why I'm worried about I <laughs> another date that's coming up in May, and I don't want the two of them to collide. Are you talking to the high five people? No, Rolling Thunder goes to Washington, D.C. on May 25th, the ride for freedom. This is a uh, four, four to one? It's yeah. It's May 15th. Oh, wow, that's ten days before. It was May 14th, but what I just saw on there earlier this week, it says May 15th. But I'll check it again to make sure. Well, what would be interesting is I, I was reading that the Occupy people were setting up the other day in Washington. They're going to be there a week, but then they didn't get to permit. But when have we, when have we known Occupy people to leave? You know, they say, well, so if they're still there when everybody else gets there, that'll be interesting. <laughs> Yeah, because Rolling Thunder usually has over 2 million bikes. You're saying that Rolling Thunder and having the militia people there at the same time would be bad? Um, bad, no, but... Um, it would be bad for the government. It, really, really bad. <laughs> as long for, as all the rednecks keep their guns across the bridge, I'll be happy. How's that? Is that the way of saying it? Uh, you, you'd be surprised when the rednecks and bikes get a lot better than probably what they think. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not worried about the getting one part. I'm worried about the gun part. As long as everybody leaves their guns on the outside of the bridge, I'll be happy. Okay. okay. Welcome to the call. Anybody would like to speak up? Go ahead. You're still on an open call. This is Barbie. That's Real Patriot, Barbie. Say that again. It's Real Patriot, Barbie. Hey, Real Patriot. I thought you were working. I am working. Just getting off work. Ah. Are you going to be sticking around tonight? Um, I will be off and on tonight. Okay. Well, make sure you... Check out the time difference between 9 o'clock Central Time and your time and plan on staying for an hour. Why? Well, Clive Bundy's going to be coming on. When? 9? Nine? 9 Central? Um, Between 9 and 9.30. 9.30 Mountain Time? Nope, Central, sir. Central, okay. Yep. So that'd be 7.30 Mountain Time. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll be on. <laughs> I know you will because you're a patriot and you follow us. So what did I just come in on when you, when you were saying leave the guns at the bridge? Oh, uh, we were talking about Operation American Spring. I was trying to figure out what the date was for it. Rolling Thunder goes to Washington, D.C. on May 25th. All right. Well, i got to get out for a little bit, but um, I'll be back in a little while. All right. We'll see you when you come back. All right. Bye. Now, don't everybody get quiet on me. I, I could talk forever. So. <laughs> but I, I'm curious to hear what other people have to say. So I'm just kind of listening. Okay, my audience is telling me easy on the rednecks. <laughs> no, no, rednecks are good people. I know. I like rednecks. Yeah, somebody, I'm one. Somebody was accusing me of, uh, they, you know, I made a comment on Glenn Black's page yesterday, and they're like, oh, every time you comment, we use banjos in the background. I said, yeah. Well, up here, we use uh, banjos to play the uh, Black National Anthem at the uh, fairgrounds. So, yeah, we're kind of proud of that. <laughs> you know what I'm proud of? I'm proud of Harry Reid. Domestic, domestic terrorist list because he listed 72 reasons that you could be a domestic terrorist and I qualified under 60 and a half of them. Oh, good deal. Yes, that I'm is proud, of be proud of I wish I could have got the whole 72. Uh, I, I, like I said, I still think people need to use the term domestic violence when they're talking about Harry Reid and what he's doing. <laughs> no, I, I, if you can get people to jump on that train and prove that he's using it, that's how to step in. And it, you know, the, that's true. It's a lot. It's a lot. If we can move the conversation to he, you know, he's, he's, I, and that's what he's using. I mean, he's threatening the people around the Bundy Ranch, on the Bundy Ranch, with force from the federal government. Not one man can decide that. I agree. Yeah, yeah I posted that on his page, too. That, that came down, and I've been banned from posting on his site. You should do a phone interview with his office. <laughs> I dare you. I, I don't want to be uh, buried out with the cattle. Chicken. Sure <laughs> and, you know, it's like I told somebody else today, uh, they asked, well, why is this all going on? I'm like, well, I think the president's in China. So, 
you know Joe Biden's not running the country, and that was Harry Reid. Nope. Okay, so let's practice this. It is sixty. Uh, it is six fifty-one p.m. Central Standard Time. You're, an open, you're on an open conference call. Please keep the language clean tonight, as we have a special guest calling in. Please try and keep your questions to a three to five minute minimum. If we have time, maybe we'll extend it so that you guys can ask even more questions. But we are expecting a lot of people, hopefully. And this is Barbie. Anybody that doesn't have me on Facebook, feel free to add me. Please also keep in mind that while there might only be 20 callers on the line, we are being mirrored by other groups, to other group radios, to recordings, to YouTube, and we have a lot more listeners than what we know. Are you sure five minutes isn't too long? I said three to five minutes. I, I would give like a, a minute for the person to ask a question to the other board and try to respond. <laughs> I'm not as mean as you are. That's why well, people like me. That's what lawmakers did to us this year when we were testifying in front of them. Uh, when they did, when we started making sense, they cut us down to a minute. And then when we got down to make it sense in a minute, then they used the rules and moved everything forward to get around public hearings. But I, I will tell you this. I will not hesitate to hit the mute button tonight. And if it gets out of control, I will put the Q&A mode on, and everybody will be muted. I, I would have it. When, when Tim and Bundy is on, I would have everybody muted no matter what. I don't want to infringe upon your right of free speech. And it's a moderated call. They know that when they're calling in. Uh, and I, like to keep, I like to keep it unmoderated. Uh, I like to be here and say, you know what? I respect you enough to listen when you talk. Please respect me enough. Right. But, but we only get one hour with Tim and Bundy. And his message is message for you to get out. Yep, and we're going to let him talk before we take questions. Perfect. Don't worry, I got this. This isn't my I first know. day. I just keep, you know, it helps if you go over things to people. Hey, you should have been here on Monday after everything happened and we were dealing with 60 callers and no way of muting anybody. I, you know, I was on that first Friday night phone call and all the people were on. <laughs> <laughs> I was on that one, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, all I wanted to get was my Facebook page out there so I could start friending people with that networking. I couldn't even get that. <laughs> Welcome to the call, caller. Do you have anything you'd like to add today? Must be Florida One. I think it's Florida One. Well, we have a total of eight people in the call at the moment and two talking. Feel free to open up and ask a question, state a comment, voice a concern. We're here for you. And hopefully my son will be done weed whacking soon. Can you hear him weed whacking in the background? I can, but that's a good thing. I can't get my kids to do that one. Okay. Has anybody heard anything more about the ranch thing in Texas? Um, I believe our governor uh, delegate will be on tonight, so we can ask her. I'm sorry. What do you mean by what do you mean by government delegate? Governor delegate. Oh, governor, governor delegate. Yes, she's running for the governor of Texas. Oh. She's been on for two nights. You didn't hear her? Uh, you know, at nighttime I have my kids ready for bed and my wife ready to go to work. And, ah. And, you know, sometimes I don't make it on nights. Like tonight, I'm going to really try to be here because I want to hear what he has to say. Well, I like hearing him speak. You don't hear people speak like him anymore. That's something that, you know, was back in the old days. That's why so many people didn't understand what he was saying. Come on over to Arkansas. We got a whole bunch of talk like that. And slower. I'm still here. I'm talking about dinner. Do they have a like a live feed going from the ranch themselves? I can talk to them. If, I can hear you. I turn the mute off. <laughs> um, as for live feed, some of the oath keepers and militiamen that are out there have um, UStream, which they can stream live. But they're so busy, they don't have time to do it. I was I was talking for you know they, for like people that might want to. You know, watch what they're, not watch what the militia people are doing, but what they're doing on the range. And for all those people out there listening in tonight, um, it is 6.58 p.m. Central Standard Time. The number to call in is 559-726-1300. The access code is 276-125 and the pound sign. I can hear it with headphones on. Okay, you guys are going to have to pick up some slack here because otherwise we're going to hear this buzzing in the background from him weed whacking outside. Yes, I have. You know, I'm going to keep learning the phone call again right now. Oh, there's another one. Go! <laughs> 
Oh, I was answering you with the mute button on again. I said, yes, we have 10 in the call. And then I said, oh, children, children. And then that's when you said, oh, you guys need to keep it down. That was kind of, kind of cool. Oh, so I'm not on mute. <laughs> no, you're not on mute. Oh, but I hate that. I do that a lot. I put myself, forget whether I put myself on mute or not. And I have to walk away because it gets a little loud. <laughs> it's Friday. I've been in school all week. <laughs> Hey, did you guys see the news today that Washington State, my home state, was the first state to lose their no child left behind money? No. Yeah, we're really excited about that. That's forty million out of our school budget. We are super happy about that. <laughs> our governor's been a complete disaster. Well, but, I know uh, we have a caller that calls in from Washington State in the wee hours of the morning. Yeah. And I, I, I wish I knew somebody that lives near her because I worry about her so much. She lives in, no wait, I have it written down. Um, Prineville, P-R-I-N-E-V-I-L-L-E. Nope, that's Oregon, that's not Washington. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised you don't have more people calling in from Washington, really. I know everybody thinks we're liberals up here, but not all of us, and even the liberals up here like guns. Well, yeah, but see, I also have a cousin that lives up there, which keeps me out of the state. Uh, did you say they lived on the coast somewhere? Yeah, he lives in a tent. Yeah, I think that's what you said, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's really odd. He eats roadkill. Uh, yeah. I, well, a lot of people, you know, if it's fresh enough. He doesn't care. Okay. It can lay there for two days and he'll pick it up off the road and eat it. Go ahead, say that's just gross. Welcome, caller. <laughs> Definitely yeah, we, do, we have an interesting homeless population up here. So I don't know if you guys in your area have where they go in there set up homes and they all, they all live there. I don't know if you guys have that, but we have it up here a lot and it gets interesting. Now, the first one I ever saw was out in California in San Bernardino Valley going into California. And I was like shocked. If we had one here, I would be there 24 7 trying to volunteer. Well, we've got a guy that wants to set up, uh, like a homeless shelter here where homeless people can, like, they're passing through the area and stay, but our city council is actually blocking them. You know, I mean, they don't have to spend any money on it. You know, this guy wants to come in and do it, but, uh, they just, they don't want the homeless people here. So it's kind of disappointing with that. That was weird. Well, when you look at Utah and what they've done, that's, that's impressive stuff there. They're going to yeah. have homeless and save money doing it. I mean, that's, you can't beat that. Well, you saw what Charleston, South Carolina did with the homeless people, didn't you? I, I haven't. I don't, you know, I'm on the West Coast, so I see those things more. Oh, people were setting up food, food kitchens in the park, and the city council didn't want people coming in to visit seeing homeless people in their city. So they went around and rounded up all the homeless people and put them in a FEMA camp. That's awesome. No. No, 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 I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> It is some things, you know, I can't imagine people actually being taken away to camps like that, but apparently we're going to let history repeat it, so. Yep. You know, I, I don't know. We should, yeah. we should get Obama on the line and ask him what his perfect picture of a perfect human being is. Because, you know, Hitler's thing was everybody in the world should have blonde hair and blue eyes. If you didn't have blonde hair and blue eyes, you weren't true as you used to be dead. At least he was straightforward about it. I'd love to see what Obama has to say. Nothing without a teleprompter. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Did you watch his, his, you know, I watched a few clips of him speaking in China today, and he had to do it from a note card. And boy, let me tell you, when he has to read it, he's terrible. You know, when he has to read it from notes or whatever it is, or if he can't use it at all, he's not a good speaker. But for some reason, when they put that teleprompter in front of him, he, he can see it's, you know, it's unbelievable. But when you, when you listen to him, when he, when he doesn't have a teleprompter, when he doesn't have no speech, he's, he kind of, you know, he has a really hard time speaking. And yet he was elected for president twice. Go figure. Well, I firmly believe, and this is, you know, what my liberal friends said back in 2008, is that America was given a choice between the first female president and the first black president. Yep. You know, McCain was not, you know, that, that there was no way they were going to stop that. And that's why I'm afraid they're gonna, if they run Hillary, people are going to be like, ah, oh, well, let's just give it to a woman. Maybe she can do better. And then forget about everything that Hillary's done in the, the last 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. 
I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, there's, I hope too, not. there's too many people awake to what happened in Benghazi. Yeah, but you can see what the media can do in, in one day. No. If you look on my wall, if you look on my wall, there's a video on there that a girl named Kira did. And it's a really good video. And I think that explains a lot that people didn't think about. Was it a video that you just posted like with the last day or so? Uh, yeah, it was like five or six down. I wrote thank you, Kira, on the, on the top of it. Was she wearing a bandana? On her head, yes. Okay, yeah, I posted, I shared that video. I shared that from your page. I think that is a very, for what it is, it's a very well done video. I'm just glad that, that people are seeing this for what it is, on the most part, and looking past the issue of race that they tried to, to use. That's, that's a good thing, and that, that probably really scared our lawmakers when they saw that, that race wasn't going to be a big part here and that we weren't going to allow it to be a big part here. And I still think we need to go after every news reporter in the United States that flipped that headline around and tried to sensationalize a lie. That, that's all of them. Sean Hannity, uh, you name it, Bill O'Reilly. All of them. They all did. Every single one of them. Every single person that was defending Cliff Bundy on Wednesday night woke up Thursday night and threw him under the bus. All of them. It wasn't just, you know, some here or there. That's why I was saying yesterday, this is, this is something that was planned from Sunday to Wednesday. I mean, they, they, somebody got together and they decided on both sides that this is how they were going to try to pull public support away from them. And then they went out and they did it. And it hasn't worked. They get more publicity now. This one backfired on them and it's kind of funny. Whoops, I fell out of the call. I'm sorry. Did you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. I was waiting for somebody else to talk. <laughs> oh. Well, there's six people in here, according to the counter. Nobody's saying anything. I'm gonna hop off for a while, charge my phone up so I can be ready for the, the the interview. All right, I'll see you in a couple hours. Yeah, I will be back. Okay. Anybody else have anything good to say today? Hello there, and thank you for coming to the conference call. This is Barbie, and I'm your volunteer moderator at the moment. Tango 800. I just uh, coming out of a a deep one. I'm glad to have you back, Tango. I missed you. Oh, I'm I'm partially back. Partially good enough for me at the moment. I understand. So how's your sleep patterns lately? They haven't changed much. You'd have been proud of me, though, Tango. I went offline last night and got some sleep so I could go to the doctor's today. Oh, good. Uh, how'd everything uh, work out uh, as far as the doctor? Well, nothing positive yet, but um, what she could, the technician could see, she said that it's definitely not, I hate echoing, it's definitely not fibroids, so they think it's a tumor. But where it's at, they should just make one little cut and it'll pop right out. <coughs> okay, I'm a, I'm unaware of uh, of the nature of the problem, but uh, and obviously this isn't a HIPAA compliant uh, call for them. <laughs> uh, I don't care if everybody knows. I know it's not cancerous or or anything bad because I have power positive thought. Uh. Hey, Real Patriot, welcome back. I was just watching this video that somebody sent to me. Um, definitely go post that on my wall. Sweet. You said Monday will be on at what time? Your time? Uh, between nine and nine thirty. Between nine and nine thirty central. Yes. 
So 7 to 7.30 my time. Okay. All right. I got it. You going to be here? Well, of course. Okay. Just making sure. So, so who are the other five people online? I don't know. Huh. Well, right. I had to unmute. One of them is Tango 800. And Florida One. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you, Florida One. All right. Thank you for that video. That was pretty cool. I just posted it. Yeah, I know. I, I posted it online, too. Hello, Barbie? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, this is Marcy. I talked to you several nights ago. Uh, Welcome uh, back, Marcy. I live in Texas, and uh, I, I've been on for about half an hour, and I'll be here for when Mr. Bundy comes on. I uh, noticed uh, you talked about Con- uh, Congressman Dwyer from Maryland a few minutes yes. ago, and yes, I heard ma'am. him on the call, I guess, last night or before, and uh, I think that's because I invited him. Uh, I belong to, I'm a founding member, so I'm just conversing for a while with you because you don't want dead space, right? That's okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm a founding member of America's Party, which is a very conservative party, and I believe that one of our members, well, he posted uh, a few nights ago that he also was on the call, but I don't know if he talked to you, but his name is Ryan Sharp, and he described America's Party and everything. And uh, Actually, so yes, ma'am. She, he did talk to me. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so we've got Congressman Dwyer belongs to our party, and Ryan Sharp belongs to our party, and I think I encountered a third person, but I can't remember who right now. But I just thought that was so cool I had to say something. Well, I hope you left everybody know that Mr. Bundy's coming on to talk to us tonight. I'm, I'm going to. What's, uh, uh, does somebody have that poster with, with the number and everything? Uh, do you have that poster on your site? Or, yes, uh, ma'am. It's on the, the community site. It's on the community conference call page, and it is on my Facebook site, too. My name is Barbie L. Rogers, okay. R-O-G-E-R-S. Okay. Oh, I, and I I was just on your site. I, I couldn't remember if I found that on there. But I noticed the young lady is a mutual friend of ours, and her name, um, I don't know if she's been in the call or how that worked out, but um, she's from Pennsylvania, and I'm from Pennsylvania, and I noticed Oh, I, no. Uh, you're, from, you're from Pennsylvania. That, I grew up there, yes. Up there, yeah, okay. And um, she found me on Facebook a couple years ago, and she's been following me ever since. And I see tonight she's on your site, too. So May I ask who? Oh, her name is Anita McElveen, I believe. Hmm. So I don't think you would know each other from Pennsylvania. She Maybe she found the call. And if she did, good girl. Um. Hmm. I don't see her on my list. Oh, she's uh, Anita? A-N-I-T-A? Yes. Uh-huh. And M-A? No, it's, pro- it's probably M-C. I don't have your, your screen up in front of me. But... Well, you never know. I might know her from Pennsylvania. I was up there for quite a while. M-C-I-L-V-E-E-N. Oh, I think we might have just shared a, a post with her. Well, it could be. Um, actually, she is friends with my old pastor's son. Oh, so it's a small world thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I probably do know her from when I was little. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm kind of hesitant to discuss her on the phone because it's, it's what, being recorded and everything. She didn't like exactly give me permission or anything, so I'll leave it at that. But that's pretty cool. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. Well, you guys take good care of Congressman Dwyer. I I thought that was so neat when I heard him on the phone. So yes, ma'am. I was laying down when he called in, and I jumped right up to make sure I took that call. Good, good. <coughs> well, I'm going to get back to working on my income tax. I had I uh, I'm slow. Um, well, and you make sure I, you I, pop on tonight and pop on any time you want to talk to us. You missed me last. Uh, after as you fell asleep, I mean, as you went to sleep, I was waking up, but I had to eat something before I got on the phone, and I'm not going to say anything more. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a good night last night. There was no way I could moderate what was happening, and I was trying and trying and trying to get more and more frustrated, and my doctor had given me some really good medicine with codeine in it. And That's it right. Too- yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> the two just weren't working. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just as well you missed that. It, it got it got hot for a while. Yeah. I heard. Oh, you did? Okay. Am I in trouble? No. Okay. Never. But that's um, why I can't go up to Bundy Ranch. I'll be the idiot that sets everything off. <laughs> that's 
that's what my husband says about me. That, that's true. I'm the I'm I'm that idiot who will set everything off. Yep, I'm the hothead. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you go for a while. I just hate to not chime in and say something. Well, make sure you come back a little bit later and have a say hi to Mr. Bundy. Yes, I'm going to try to uh, round up some people for you. Okay. Okay. Well, great talking to you. Thank All you. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Hi there, new caller. How are you tonight? Well, let me throw out a announcement here for everybody. It's 7.27 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see how many times I mess that up tonight. And we have a special caller calling in tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And we were asking you to please keep your language on the clean side, please. Just, yeah. And try to keep your questions to a three to five minute long minimum. Try to go on the three side. That way everybody gets a chance to say hi. Um, we need to show this man that we support him. Okay? Anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to throw them out there. That's what we're here for. And we have no problem answering. This is Barbie. And I am your volunteer moder- moderator for this evening. And we're going to see how many times I get tongue-tied tonight. Anybody want to make a bet on it? Nope, nobody wants to bet on me getting tongue-tied. Come on. You know I will. Especially since my voice sounds different because I've got headphones on tonight. It messes with the way I sound. To me, anyway. Hi there, new caller. Would you like to say hi? I guess not. 